Hello, good evening, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 2, where the main plot is finished, and now I just need to work my way through the expansion, however much time that's going to take me. Who knows? I don't. And anyone who does know, don't tell me, because I don't want to know. Because, spoiler free, and all that. So, where I left off last week, to, you know, abruptly change tracks, just jump entirely halfway across the map to a different train track entirely, I had just discovered this room here, what appears to be a room. <laughs> Spoils! No! Don't spoil anything! The tags say no spoilers! But yes, where I left off last week, I had just discovered this room behind a secret door. Is everything outside the fridge? Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. But the smell, Madlib. Also, good evening and welcome back to the stream, just as a by the by. <laughs> Uh, and I, you know, decided to wait to find out what was in this room. Oh, I'm in the sewers, all right. These are glorious sewers, which I had explored a fair chunk of at the near the end of my stream last week. It's just this room and the end of this one corridor left. So... I was going to start with the room because I don't want to be mean or anything. So... Will be done. Oh, what do you know? Enemy sighted. Anybody surprised? Nobody's surprised. It's a gibberling? There's got to be more than one gibberling in here, but, you know, let's just send everybody after it because Overkill is my, my little name. Yeah, there we go. There's the rest of them. Surprised-ish. Mutated Gibberling. Okay, two mutated Gibberlings. The regular Gibberling is already dead. Alright, Imoen, you shoot at that one, please. Yes. I'll go for this one. Balgar, you go for that one. Our injured people will hang back for the moment until we find out what more than gibberlings there are in here, yes? It's just gibberlings. It's nothing but gibberlings. Okay. You go for that one. You have already picked a target. Airy, I I don't know. Just do something with that one. Or do that. That is also a possibility, yes. Okay, so let me just grab this gold. What is it? And I will grab the pretty rocks, including the ones that are already set in a necklace. Put them in there for now. Okay, this definitely goes further. So I'm actually going to back up and we're going to check out this last corridor just in case. Just in case it's not a dead end. It's not a dead end. That's fascinating. Okay. Well, we'll figure that out later. Does it have a pip? Sorry. Okay. Those those all go outside the city. So I'm trying to get into the palace by way of the sewers. So I don't want to go back up into the city. So I definitely want to follow this around. And we left a gibberling alive? That's very unlike us. Feel the backhand of justice. Thank you, Minsk. Well, apparently we left some gibberlings alive. My down what just went boom? Why did something go boom? Things aren't supposed to go boom. Airy, I'm, I'm not sure that, you know, after we've just massacred a second pile of gibberlings is the best time to bring up your feelings about what great things we're doing. Okay, this looks promising. To the castle basement. This is exactly what I was looking for. Alright, so just to make sure, 
I will save my unwanted throne. <laughs> and we'll go upstairs. You must gather your party before venturing forth. And immediately find a secret door. Well, far be it from me. Without doubt. This place is just too darn creepy. I really want out of here. Okay, so is that back? Hmm. I'm not sure if that's back the way we came or not. Yeah, that's that's back the way we claim. Oh, the vibrating must be the bombardment. Uh, for for those new newer to where I am in Baldur's Gate, I am in a city that is currently being besieged. Yes. Okay, everybody move away from the crate so that Imolin can look inside. Bullet, bullet. We're not underground. Well, we are in the basement, but we're not in the sewers anymore. You should have brought this up when we were in the sewers. Alright. Oh, look. Elite Orog. Elite Orc. Elite Orc. Spectacular. Okay. I will go after the Elite Orog. I request I request to bring Minsk with me. Chihira and Balgar can go for this Orc. And then Imowen and Eri can work on this Orc. Okay. Everybody has your orders, you're good to go. Do the thing. Nice. Now, I think everybody's inventories were kind of full. Yeah, Minsk has filled up. Jahira is filled up. Balgar might as well be filled up. Okay. We're not going to be looting these axes. Halberds? Battle axes. Yes. It will be done. Oh man. Three doors. And so many containers. Okay, Imowen. Locked. Okay. We will leave no crevice untouched. Did I accidentally turn party AI? No, nope. party AI is on. She just didn't detect it. All right, what do we got here? We've got a wand. And it's not identified. That's that's great. I don't have time for this. Bunch of basic arrows I don't need. Another locked chest. Oh, fascinating. Okay. Acid arrow plus one. Arrow of ice. Uh... Let's put the ice arrows here, and the extra ones can go to the floor, because I just don't have the room. I have so many acid arrows plus one here. Valgar, hold those. That didn't fill you up, did it? No, no, it did not. Okay. All right. What's in this box, which is also locked? Flar's scabbard and a turquoise gem. Fascinating. Flar's scabbard. The scabbard is the companion to Flar's enchanted blade, Fobane, and like the sword, it was rumored to have been lost when Mithranor fell. Hey, didn't I didn't I have Fobane? Uh let me just Let's see, was somebody wielding Fobane or did
did I have it in storage somewhere? Belm. Sword of Agility. Flail of Ages. Wizard Slayer. Cutthroat. Alright, Minsk, I need to look in your bag. Let's see. I remember reading Fobane before, which makes me leads me to believe that I've had possession of it at some point. But I might not have possession of it anymore. Uh, let's see. Doom do doom do doom do doom. Nope, it's definitely not in here. Huh. Well, I, I'm i sure I've had possession of that sword, but apparently I don't have possession of it anymore, so... Or is it that the one that I didn't get reassembled? That's also a possibility. And crossbow bolts. Alright. What is it? Oh, right. I should put the gem in my gem pouch. I want to try this door. Oh, wow, what a door to choose. Um, elite Orog, Elite Orog, Elite Orc, Elite Orc. Why is there four of them when there's six of me? This is terrible. Uh, Alright, well, I will go after this Elite. Mince and wool stand ready. Minsk, you go after this elite. I Jahira, back me up. I can Belgar, hear you. you go after this elite orc. Time to move. And Imowen and Eri, you gang up on this one. Okay? Alright. I'll hurt you if I have to. Okay, okay. Yep. Oh, wait, those those are the those are the ice arrows I already put down. Never mind. Never mind. Never yes. mind. Okay. I am listening. We got through that with remarkably little damage to ourselves. That's pretty good. Okay, and I'm sensing a pattern. I am sensing a full-on pattern here. Well, that was interesting. All right, Imowen. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, disarm right, that right. trap. And unlock it. Crossbow bolts. All that for crossbow bolts. And some what gold. Alright, so this looks like a way up. Yeah, to upper levels. Okay, let me just finish exploring this floor before I go upstairs. Because I don't want anything coming up my backside that I didn't expect. Doubt. Maybe I should have phrased that differently. I'm not sure if there was any better phrasing, but maybe I should have phrased that differently. Let's try... This locked door, Imowen. No problem at all. Oh. Speak. I think we set off an alarm. Mage, fighter, fighter. Go for the eyes. Go for the eyes. Yeah. You know what, 
but the mage is a more important target. Yes, get the mage. Fighter. What the? Okay, I'm gonna have to... Alright, I will go after this fighter. Whoa! I thought I was paused. Himowen, you go for her since she is paying very close attention to you and Aerie. Aerie, you also have something to do with her. Every hamster has his Minsk, day. you are practically standing on this one, so take care of it. Jahira, I would like you to back up and help our two squishies. I'll aid you, my dear. And Valgar, I don't know, back me up. Okay, all right. Ninja, take your life, she did! All right, Ready you two, way. that one, which Jahira is already stabbing. Yes. I... Okay, well, that was terrible, but everyone appears to I be mostly ready. alive. Uh, if you would just drink one of these, thank you. So much fun. Okay. Uh, pass those. Oh, wait. Jahira doesn't have any space. Well, add the invisibility potions to your pile. Add those to that. Send. Oh, you can't do that because you're too far away. What is it? Okay, you know what? Everybody, we're going to gather up over us. here first. Valgar, I'm pretty sure you have an existing stack of that, so take that. Time to move? Himowen, pass me those. I'll add that to the pile. What is this? Storm giant strength, invulnerability, oil of speed. Okay, that's everything yes. from that pile of loot. Without hesitation. And then this pile of loot. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Imowen. You can count on me. Get that one. And then get that one. What is it? This will not take long. And yeah, I think maybe we should talk to this prisoner. Even though they don't have a name, they might have something useful to say. But I am going to save first. So. This is my chance. Thank you for releasing me. Okay, that, that wasn't anything useful at all, but apparently he's just going to leave and alert the whole castle to the fact if that we're here. As if that wasn't already known. Same thing there. Oh. Let's just go back here. And Emowyn, if way, you then. could, yeah, 
Yes, okay. Yes, it will be done. I mean, it makes sense that the prison is covered in traps. Oh. Name. Gotcha. Fuzzy Boots, hello. Yes, yes, I did play the first Baldur's Gate. I played for the first Baldur's Gate through creepy. in its entirety. Good to go. Last fight in the Baldur's Gate? What oh, it was tricky. Imowen won it for me, though, Perfect. so... But yeah, if, if you have a bunch of time on your hands and you're curious... Uh... The whole playthrough of Baldur's Gate 1 was streamed, so uh, both Baldur's Gate 1 and the expansion The Siege of Dragonspear are available in the Baldur's Gate 1 playlist on my YouTube channel that I just linked to with the bot there. So basically I'm playing my way through Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2, and then I'm going to play through Baldur's Gate 3 in order. Intriguing. What have we here? Asme Jahag? I've only played the first. Ah, I see. Oh, sure. Let's talk to Asme. I see I'm not the only child of Baal who is seeking escape from Gromnir's madness. What are you talking about? You are a child of Baal. If you disapprove of Gromnir's actions, why are you here? Uh, hmm. Let's go with, what are you talking about? Well, since you are skulking around in the nether regions of the castle, I have to assume that you are seeking an escape from this place, as am I. Actually, I'm trying to find a way to see in to see, <laughs> to see Gromnir. You might want to rethink that. Gromnir is mad. He's randomly executing anyone he thinks might be a traitor. Really only had trouble in two spots. The werewolf island and that last fight is tough. The werewolf island felt harder than the last fight, honestly. Werewolf island? Oh, I remember that one. To be honest, my main difficulty with that one was finding what I was looking for. I'd gone in there looking for dynamic hair, and I just could not find her because she was in the shadow of a pit that I thought I'd already explored. It was very annoying. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got into the habit of calling um, Dyna hair dynamic hair throughout my playthrough, uh, just because it was easier for me to spit it out quickly. <laughs> Plus, she did have spectacular hair. Most of the ball spawn just go along with his wild accusations, trying to avoid drawing attention to themselves, but I can't stand it anymore. Now I understand why you're trying to escape this place. Gromnir has to keep you ball spawn in line. Sounds you just like the stomach for leadership. Now I understand why you're trying to escape. Executing innocent people just isn't right. And how long until Gromnir points his finger at me? I just want to get as far from that madman as possible. Can you give me any advice on how to get inside to see Gromnir? There's a host of patrols just down this corridor. They're guarding some prisoners Gromnir plans to execute. If you're careful, you could sneak past them and into the castle. But watch out. There's traps and alarms all over the place. Most of them are so sensitive they go off if you can get close to them. Keep a wide berth if you know what's good for you. Of course, I think you're mad if you want to get in to see Gromnir. I'd recommend you turn back and get out of here, like me. And then straight back into the castle. Intriguing dead end here. Except it's not a dead end. Hold on a moment. To the jail. To upper levels. Okay. Hmm. 
So now I have two possible options. Do you have an? Oh, you do have a name. Something up? You also have a problem. Just like old times. Well, except for the torture and all. All right, that's that. Speak. This one has Without a name, so maybe they're important. Oh, so tired. Think it grovels before your kindness. Thank you for my freedom. Okay, you're welcome. Yes. I guess. Quickly and precisely. And this is the other door, Emily. which is also locked. I don't see Frankie any reason locked. not to unlock it. What is it? Okay, so I the think. question is to upper levels or through the jail. Hmm Tough choice. But I mean, this still does not offer a way out of the city entirely. So, like, the way I came in just goes into the sewers. The sewers do not lead out of the city. Uh, hmm. Well, let's try the jail. I am fairly certain that my folks can survive. And I have absolutely no intention of sneaking past anybody. We're gonna face roll this or, or nothing. Well, we're gonna have to face roll this or nothing. Oh my goodness. Billion and Vampire. Well, they have names. Isn't that interesting? Speak. Well, I choose to go for the Vampire. You go for Fildian. Is Fildian a name or a designation? You never get how sneaking worked and backstabbing. Uh, well, I have to admit, I haven't really figured out backstabbing either. Uh, mostly I just uh, go and, and flail at them, uh, sometimes literally in some cases. Uh, sneaking is... Sneaking is easier in a way, but... Uh, generally speaking, you either have everybody keep uh, hitting the stealth button until they actually stealth, or you can use invisibility potions, of which I have enough that everybody in my party could drink one. But, eh. Who says what? Minsk, that one. Jahira, help me with the vampire. I'm still here. Valgar, you help with the with Fildian or the Fildian? Oh my What? A child of Baal here? Damn the wretches for their lustful hearts. They were warned to stay away from the blood of gods, no matter how sweet. Uh-huh. I guess I'm just too irresistible for the likes of you. Die, vampire scum! Or, I don't suppose you just let me pass without a fuss. You know, considering that we've almost killed your nameless vampire companion already. Hmm. I guess I'm just too irresistible. You, you are a powerful one of your kind. I can smell the murder in your heart. You shall never let us live, I would think. Come then, my children. We die this night, once and forever, throwing ourselves on the merciless blade that is this godling. Uh, okay. Uh, if you insist. Bye! Just, just float off. Yes? Without hesitation. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't actually have an interest in 
staking vampires right now. Lockpick failed. Oh no, now this is the part, kind of thing that I hate. Um. What is it? Are you back again already? This will not take long. Okay, that door just does not want to open, but thankfully this is a way into this corridor anyway. I don't need that door. Wait a minute. Oh. For crying out loud. Okay. All right. That's the jail I already cleared. That is absolutely useless to me. Upstairs. We're going upstairs. Oh, what a waste of my time. Okay, where was- there it is. Oh. Oh, I see. What do we have here? Ilkhan Soldier. Ilkhan Battle Mage. Ilkhan Soldier. Ilkhan Soldier. Ilkhan Soldier. Okay. Speak. Myself. And right. Valgar Something shall go me. for the battle mage. You point, I punch. Minsk, I would like you to have at with this soldier. Speak your mind. Jahira, go for this soldier. Name. You shoot at this one and take Eri with you, and we're just going to ignore the bow person for the time being while we take care of the melee people. I know this is backwards from how I normally do things, but... Yeah. But that one dude's pretty much standing on us, so... Alright, everybody gang up on this bow person. Okay. Did we get a... Did we, oh yeah, we got time stopped. Great. Well, when you're... Such a mess. Yes, it is such a mess. It's an incredible mess. Thank what you for it? noticing. It will be done. All right, take the gold, take the potions. I find that interesting. I'm going to take that. Imwin, take those arrows. Oh, they're just plus ones, like every other plus one I have. How disappointing. Fancy quarterstaff. You and Boo and I. Composite longbow. Thank you, Minsk. Speak. Okay. I think this floor is Certainly. just this room, but let's have a little wander around just to be certain. Oh, it's not just this room. 
See, that's why I have a little wander around to check these things. Okay, what what is that? Where does this go? Oh, out the front door. Okay, never mind. Quickly and precisely. Out the front door is definitely not where I want to be, so let's take the stairs. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Your guards threaten me with arrest if I do not accompany them. I do not take kindly to threats, Gromnir. What is it you want? Mm, to accuse you of treachery, I'm guessing, from the context clues that I've been getting so far. Actually, you know what I just realized is that I forgot to get out my notes. Did I make any notes here besides that uh, Melisand here I don't trust? I really don't trust Melisand. There's something weird going on there, and I do not like it. All right, let me see here. Hmm... No, no, I don't have any other notes that would be helpful. That is a pity. What is it you want, Gromnir? Gromnir knows a stranger came to Saradouche. Pretty Melisan, another Valspawn. You must think Gromnir too stupid not to remember. There is no way in or out of the city. Okay, now I'm even more suspicious of Melisan. <laughs> because, you know, half sib or not, this this is a half orc. Uh <laughs> Um a half orc half sibling of mine. How spectacular. And this is the one that Melisan chose to put in charge as general of the city? I'm even more suspicious that Melisan is one of those, uh, one of those five siblings that have ganged up on this, I'm gonna call it Highlander operation that's going on here. <sighs> you fool, Gromnir! Danger may be our only hope of escaping this siege alive. Mm. Yeah. Gromner knows the truth. We is no idiot. Malison has brought this outsider in to kill Gromner. That's a new one. I don't want to actually kill you. Actually, I'd like to keep as many of my sibs alive as possible at this point because that seems to be the opposite of what the people who are trying to take dad's power are about. This is really weird phrasing, but, you know, they appear to be attempting to consolidate the power of Baal by killing all of the other uh, children of Baal and gathering the pieces into themselves, which is why I keep referring to this as a Highlander situation. Uh, I, I feel like we're going towards a this there can be only one situation here and I do not like it. And yeah, the fact that Melisand got, like went out into the world and gathered up a whole bunch of Ballspawn who didn't even know they were Ballspawn and brought them all to this one city that wasn't under attack until they got here. I, I just suspicious. Suspicious. Sean Connery? Amongst other people, yes. Ballspawn mean nothing. Yaga sure is Ballspawn. He wants Gromner dead too. <laughs> Foolish Melisan is plotting against Gromner. Melisan is plotting the ruin of all the children of Ball. I mean, I suspect that too, but I'm not so blunt about saying it to her face. I respect you. You are mad, Gromner. Have I not always aided you and all the other balls spawn? I, I brought you here to protect you. It was your paranoia that brought Yagashura upon us. Mmm. I. Mmm. Mad? Paranoid? <laughs> No! Gromner finally understands how Melisan lied. Melisan lured Gromner into a death trap. 
Telgram near where the Valspan assassin is hiding. No idea about the assassin, quote unquote, but I do believe I I do believe that Melisand lured the Valspan to this place. I do believe that. So I'm not quite as paranoid as this guy, but uh siblings alike in paranoia. The stranger is not hiding, Gromnir. If you were not holed up in this castle, you two could have had a meeting when the stranger first arrived. Hmm, that's not wrong. But also, I'm standing right here, guys. <laughs> I'm I'm right here. Like, look, I'm I'm right here. There's no way. There's no way that he wouldn't be able to see me. <laughs> Gromnir will never meet with this ball spawn of yours. Ah! Gromnir is wise to Melisande's schemes. Melisande wants to turn ball spawn against ball spawn until all are dead. Except her, I'm guessing. Your madness will be your death, Gromnir, nothing else. The death of you and all those who foolishly follow you. Take Melisan away, but watch closely. <laughs> Gromnir knows that Melisan is tricky. Melisan lies. Melisan deceives. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of on that boat. I would not say it in such a creepy way, but I'm kind of on that boat. Bye. Sorry I broke your jail. So, the assassin is here. <laughs> Good fun. So, Foxwine has come to kill Gromnir, eh? I don't actually want to kill you. I'd rather we talked, but it seems like you might not be uh, capable of seeing outside your uh, little uh, sphere of... of, of um, Let's go with kookiness right now. Well, nice talk, nice talk. Now, I have a feeling that these people are going to join in, but whether they'll join in on my side or on his side, it's hard to say. Obviously, the Ilkhan soldier is going to be on his side. Karin the Black, Ilkhan Battle Mage. Can't, can't we talk? Can't we talk? No? Alright then. Something up? Alright, Imoen. Take out that archer. I would really prefer to talk, but I'm just not being given that option unless... Can I try to talk to Karin no the problem. Black? Oh no, wait, no, no, no. Not you, Imowen. Imowen, I want you shooting at that archer. Yes. I want to talk to Karin well, the Black. Hesitation. Okay, uh... Well, that, that was... wrong. Alright. Imowen, which... where are you? Why are you up here? All right, well, shoot at that battle mage, I guess. What is it? I'll go for Gromnir. I'm not sure what Ari is doing, but it looks like it'll probably be useful, so I'll let her do her thing. Jahira, drink a potion, would you? Go for the archer, Minsk. Go for the archer. I can hear and you. Balgar, yes. Uh, go for Barina Elkin, then. I, 
I think it would be a very good idea if you just went over here. No, wait, that, that's Valgar. Airy, go over here. Oh, well, that was a mistake. Imowen, you also go over here, please. Minsk, you have the right idea. Uh, Jahira, Karen the Black recalls for some action. Valgar, you are closer to the battle mage, so I'd like for you to do that. Harry, shoot at Gromir. What do you want? Give a win, drink a potion. Blast, I can't see any of the mages. Yes? They love time stop, don't they? Could we get time back again, please? Okay, have I got time back? I do! Okay. Jahira, Jahira. I would like you to cure some serious wounds on yourself, please. Thank you. Thanks for the follow! Much appreciated! And I'm sure you'll have liked that too, because not only will you get access to some of the cutest follower emotes on Twitch, but you're also going to be earning channel points faster towards my various marvelous channel point rewards. Yes, I had to. They attacked me first. I have not attacked anybody who didn't attack me first. So much for your idea to work with Gromnir. What now? Gromnir gave me no choice. I never even had a chance to reason with him. You talk like I had a choice. The fool was too far gone. Or I thought Gromnir's guards took you away. Indeed, what did happen to Gromnir's guards, Melisan? Care to illuminate? Gromnir gave me no choice. I know the chance of Gromnir joining you was slim, Foxwine, but I thought he might listen to reason. I was desperate to end this siege, and I... I was wrong. I'm sorry. Now I fear we are all doomed. There is no way out of Saradish. Between the army and the strange imprisoning magics, even our wizards are trapped here. I might be able to help, Melisan. I know a way to escape the city. There is yet hope, Melisan. I am able to leave the city at will. Or, you may be trapped here, but I'm not. I can leave Sardish any time I want to. Hmm... Do I know a way to escape the city? I'm not sure if I actually do, but there must have been a way that those attacking forces were getting into the sewers, right? You know what, let's, let's tell her I know a way to escape the city. You can leave Saradish? 
Yes, of course. You found your way into the city. It is only logical to expect you can find your way out. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Huh, <sighs> yeah, the pocket plane? Uh, yeah, well, I might be offering to evacuate everybody through my pocket plane, but I'm not entirely certain that that's what I'm offering, but maybe that's what I'm offering. I don't know. I'm not sure I want to let this lady into my pocket plane, but I may have chosen the, the option that doesn't give me a chance to... Oof. If you can leave, then the city can still be saved. They've endured so much. We must help them. Foxwine, if you can, then, on then only you have the means to do that. I would help these people, but I'm not sure that I can, Melisan. Why do that? I could always try to bring you and the ball spawn elsewhere. You could flee. Or what makes you think I will risk my neck for this place, Melisan? Hmm. I could always bring the you and the ball spawn elsewhere. You could flee. Understand, Foxwine, that this siege is but the beginning. Until this threat is ended, it doesn't matter where we go. We are in danger of being exterminated by Yagashura and his allies. Allies? Allies? Yale allies? I... Mm, whatever. Whichever. Whichever one's the correct one, that's the one I said, and I didn't say an incorrect one. Are we all agreed? Yes? Okay. Eventually, even you would be overwhelmed by their power. I, I know more about them, Foxwine. More than I'm saying. But I won't tell you everything unless you try to save Saradish. You do not have to bargain with me, Melisan. I would help these people no matter the cir what the circumstances. You tread a thin line. I dislike being manipulated by anyone. I see. You tell me nothing and force me into helping you regardless of my own desires. Or, how do you know so much? Why do you even care? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure this is another one of my half-sibs, so I, I don't know that I... Huh... <sighs> Actually, you know what? Let's go with the last one, because I'm curious what she's going to answer. How do you know, and why do you care? You might consider me to be a guardian, for want of a better term. I know the prophecies of Alundo. I know some feel they allude to the return of Baal to the realms. Yet yeah, you've said this before. By taking an active interest in the fate of Baal's offspring, you and those like you, I hope to prevent the Lord of Murder from returning to the realms in any form. So you are just another person meddling in the fate of Baal's children. It is not my first choice to do this, Foxwine. However, in my dealings with the children of Baal, I have learned that sometimes the ends must justify the means. Uh... Tell me what is to be done, Melisan, and I shall strive with all my power to bring it about. It looks like I am again left with little choice in my course. What do I do? I will help you, but only because it might end up saving my own neck. I mean, that last one is incorrect. I could leave via pocket dimension any time I wanted to. My neck is not the one in trouble here. But I'm playing a goody-goody. I, I am the two shoes of goody-goodies. <sighs> Tell me what is to be done, and I shall strive with all my power to bring it without, about. The army itself is immaterial. If you fought your way to Yagashurim himself and defeated him, the war force would collapse. But that's not a simple matter. He is a powerful fire giant to begin with. Ooh, fun! Ew, that's disgusting! I don't even want to imagine Baal mating with one of those overgrown monsters. Is it any more of an abomination than a Baal spawn half-elf? Baal was a god of pure evil. His taint is an abomination in any form. Fair enough, but a giant is no more difficult to kill than any other creature. They just take a bit more stabbing. It is not that simple, Foxwine. Like you, Yagashura is one of the most powerful ball spawn to walk the realms. I know not what gifts your blood has passed on to you, but I can tell you something of his. Oh, Foxwine, why do I get the feeling I'm not going to like what she says next? The giant seems to be invulnerable to harm. 
arrows, blades, even the most powerful of our spells and enchanted weapons leave no permanent mark. He heals faster than we can wound him. Are you saying Yagashura is invincible? Well, Yagashura hasn't run into weapons like the ones I wield. How am I supposed to kill someone who is immune to harm? Hmm, are you saying my half-brother is invincible? Yagashura was not born with this immunity. He developed it, learned it, somehow during his childhood spent in a secret glade in the forest of Mir. I can show you where that glade is, but it is only speculation. The key to the giant's invulnerability might lie there, but it might not. There may be nothing there at all. And if that's the case, then there is only one other place to look, though it is far more dangerous. Yagashure has attracted a large number of fanatical devotees of his kind. They worship him as a god, as you can well imagine. They built a temple to him in the marching mountains. Many of them are in his army now. That may mean the temple is vulnerable to your attack. Perhaps Yagashura's secret lies there? I don't know. This all seems pretty iffy. What makes you think any of this will pan out? Fine, I will accept your mission and find a way to destroy the invincible Yagashura. I'll kill Yagashura, but once the deed is done, I better get something in return. Hmm... This all seems pretty iffy. Because if it doesn't, Foxwine, then all the poor Ballspawn that I have tried to aid, including you, are doomed. Yagashura and his allies will have their way. We must have hope. I know it is much to ask of you, whatever it, whether it means anything to you or not. Thank you. Now, I must attend to the wall's defenses. However you leave, I suggest you do as soon as possible. Godspeed, Foxwine. I pray you succeed in your mission, for all our sakes. Well, uh, thanks for very little. I have too much in my pack as it is. You'll have to pick that up off the ground. Speak. Okay. Ooh, that's a nice pile of money. I'll take the stone. What is it? Valgar, take those. Yes. More potions. I am intrigued by some of these unique looking things. Okay, I how do I get this stuff identified? What is it? This will not take long. Well, I don't actually know how to get to my pocket dimension, uh, game-wise. But I feel like maybe I should save, because a lot happened. So let me just save. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Okay, these are the walls. Ability menu? Oh, okay. Well... I'm going to make a quick stop at the temple before I leave. I'm I do believe it has gotten worse since the last time I was outside. Hi, how are ya? If it must be done, as always, it will be essential. So there's still more I may do to aid you, sister. I would like to see your services. Certainly, my sister. We do not have much much due to the siege, but I will offer what aid I can. Well, what I really need is a massive pile of identification. So, this and that and that and that, please. Spear plus three. 
Lavender Ayunstun. Morning Star plus three. Ice Star Ice Star. Okay, bright lavender hue of this stone dances and sparkles as if the stone itself were alive for the lavender. Equipped abilities, armor class plus four, save earth is death plus four. Huh. Morning star plus three, very normal other than the plus three-ness. And ice star. The head of this morning star appears to be forged from an unbreakable ice blue, blue crystal. The handle is chilled to the touch, and the wielder is surrounded by a sleuthing nimbus of cool air, which protects against even magical fire. Huh. So, 2d4 plus 4 plus 1d4 cold damage, crushing, and gives fire resistance plus 20%. Interesting. Okay, MON does not have anything to identify. Minsk has so much. So much. Alright, let's see if any of these are interesting. Composite longbow plus one, battle axe plus two, warhammer plus two, stud leather armor plus two, quarter staff plus one, composite longbow plus one, Studded Leather Armor, Battle Axe plus two, Dagger plus one, Longbow plus one, Leather Armor plus two, Warhammer plus two, Longbow plus one, Battle Axe plus two. Okay, those are all very ordinary, actually. All right, Warhammer, Battle Axe, Short Swords, Warhammers, Longbow, Studded Armor, Missed one. Uh, let's see. None of these have special names either. Valgar just has a whole pile of arrows and not much else. Aerie, do you have anything? No. Okay. Let's see about selling off some of this stuff. I will hang on to one of the composite longbows, but the rest has got to go. Although it does easily allow me to make back the money that I just spent on identification. I do like that. Okay. Sell, 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 sell. Much better. Okay. Now I'm not 100% sure. Every hamster has his day. But let's find out if. No, you, you can't. Nope, you cannot. Okay. I probably can, but I have a plus three. So we're just going to stuff this in the pack in case we need it for later. Speak. Okay, so Pillar Fox said that in my ability menu. Yes. Where is my ability menu after all? Well, it's definitely not a spell I can done. cast. Bottom right star. Oh, thank you. What is it? I I have learned nothing, obviously. Speak. All right, charm animal, death blow, 
Slayer change. Slayer change? Pocket plane. To the pocket plane, everybody. We'll just do it right in front of the priest. It's fine. Welcome home. Ooh, shiny one. Hi, Sespinar. Now, certainly. Let me just. Nope, that's the equalizer. That is not the foe blade. Alright, we're, we're going to briefly talk to the M. Yes, yes you are. and show me what you can do. Ooh. Must I look through your belongings? Match them to recipes, must I? Let me see. Ah, the flail of many heads it is. Ouch! Ooh, wrong head. Okay, I obviously don't have the ingredients for those at still. You sure still. you don't just want to dump everything out? Thanks. Let's see. Nope. The other part isn't here. Well, if you get both circlet of Nethril and bronze of Yunstone, I has great recipe. Good for mages, it is. Okay, I will make a note of that. If find circlet of Nethril and bronze iron stone can have imp craft something thanks for the hints well they're not really hints are they Martha? Hmm. Nope. Nope. I see nothing more that matches with my recipe. No more shiny ones. Oh well. Back to cleaning, I guess it. Uh, I I don't dislike Sespinar, but man, that that voice just Oh man, it just activates my headache. Ooh, shiny one. Now the question is, do I get to choose where I go next? Let's save and hope that I manage to save my brain so I remember how to do this. Aha! You can use your planar door to travel to several places. Where do you wish to go? Return me from whence I came. I need to escape Saradish and make my way to Yagashura's home in the marching mountains. I wish to go to Saradish. I do not wish to leave at this time. Well, return me from whence I came and I wish to go to Saradish are the same thing currently, so I wish to go to Yagashura's home in the Marching Mountains. The magic of this plane can place you in the wilderness on the road to Yagashura's home. 
Well, that's that's a hi, hello, how are ya, and howdy. Yeah, I guess you're a soldier. Yeah, I guess okay, great. And a traveler who has been removed. Well, uh, let's gang up on the shoulder. So let look. Let's gag gang up on the Yagashura soldiers, shall we? Great fun. It's them, the ones the Yagashura wanted. The magic of the pocket plane has placed you in the wilderness on the road to Yagashura's home. Your map has been updated, and you shall have to make your. Well, that that doesn't. They're attacking merchants. Ah, there we go. The magic of the pocket plane has placed you in the wilderness on the road to Yagashura's home. Your map has been updated and you shall have to make your way to Yagashura's areas and discover the source of his invulnerability. Yes, that was my intention and boy there are a lot of enemies here. And yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm getting tired of this Amen. archer shooting at my kidneys. What can I do? You two, get on the archer. Make them regret. Yes? And this other archer. The backhand of justice has a mailed fist, and I am here for it. Alright. You... can't see what I saw? Okay, let's... What is it? Without doubt. Okay, uh... I'm still here. And you can't... Fair enough. Well, apparently the potions aren't over here. Interesting. It's a lot more exciting than any circus. Why does Valgar keep seeing such different things from what I can see? The heck is going on here? Hmm? Like, why can't she see that scroll that Valgar could see? They're practically standing next to each other. In fact, I think they are- yeah, they are standing next to each other. Why can't she see it? Yes? I don't understand. What is it? Okay, so the soldiers were killing merchants for some reason. You know what, what if I grab the scroll and then pass it to Airy? Oh, and pass that there. I forgot to sell those off. Forgot to sell off my jewels as well. Speak. This 
will not take long. Well, there does seem to be a dude alive. All my stuff is authentic. Really, it is. Thank you, thank you, kind lord. An honest merchant cannot even travel the roads anywhere in Tethir without running into armies and vagabonds, it seems. Glad to be of help. A reward might be nice for helping you out. Yes, well, after I kill you and loot your gold, it won't worry you quite so much. Hmm. Well, obviously, glad to be of help. Here, do take this coin as a token of my gratitude. With my caravan destroyed, I am a bit in dire straits, but it's far preferable to death, I am sure. And I still retain most of my goods, after all. Party reputation gone up. Party gained a thousand gold, which is barely a drop in the bucket to what we're carrying, but we're not going to tell him that. The trick, now, shall be to wait for my next caravan to arrive by this way and move all the goods out of the wagon. That will not be for a few days yet. If you do wish to purchase something before they come, I would be happy to give you a good price. Please, give me back my gold! Excuse my manners, however. I am Carthus El Hezar, a merchant who is just traveling through. I normally take the road through Sardish, but that's been closed with all the trouble there. I'm surprised to see others in this glade, never mind soldiers. I was nervous to head this way myself, considering the glade's history and everything, but I thought at the very, le it would, at the very least trouble would steer clear of it. There's supposed to be a temple near here. Do you know of it? Do you know anything about a community of fire giants nearby? Perhaps I could see your wares, or... Yes, well, I'll be on my way. Hmm. Do you know anything about a community of fire giants nearby? No, I'm afraid not. I steer well clear of the mountains. I would risk the glade, perhaps, even for all its spirits, but I won't go... But I wouldn't go there. You know something of the glade? I have heard that the glade was once home to the temple to a temple of the old god of murder, Baal, at least until his death. When he died, he took most of his followers with him, and that temple is no exception. All of his clerics and assassins are supposed to have died horribly, and so they haunt the glade and Baal's old temple. Spirits and other things seem drawn there as well. It is a frightening place, my friend. I wouldn't stay there any longer than you needed to if I were you. I didn't ask about the temple, and now I can't. Okay, then. Perhaps I could have a look at your wares. Oh, of course. If I can lighten the load, or perhaps pick up a few valuables, I will make this disastrous trek all the more worth it. Let's see. Well, first of all, let's identify this. Oh, that's, um... That ain't much. Let's just sell that. Alright, what does he have? I'm not really interested in weapons that don't have side effects, which is why I'm just skimming past all this stuff. Although, buying a better short bow for Imowen might be a good idea. She's still using a basic one without any pluses at all. He does have a short bow plus three, which is what makes me think of it. Also crossbows, bolts, slings, various bullets, potions, scrolls. This guy was traveling with a lot, dang. Alas, he's, he does not have an ammo pouch, which is, which is what I was really hoping for. Oh, well. Alright, Imowen, we are going to indulge for your sake. You are going to get this short bow plus three. You're going to in steal. No, we're going to buy it outright. Excellent. I don't think anybody else has anything. Lean to Watcher's Keep. Uh, 
is that a thing in the expansion or is that a thing in the actual game? I've I've been I've done a lot of things and been a lot of places, so uh <laughs> Well, I definitely have not been to it in the uh, Throne of Ball expansion. I think I have been to it in... Uh, I'm pretty sure I've been to it here uh, in, the, in Baldur's Gate 2, uh, very near the beginning of my playthrough. Uh, that's the place where I got the flail from, with the one with the three heads, right? I'm pretty sure that was it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything. I'm not sure about my bullet supplies, to be honest. Perhaps I should buy just a few more bullet plus two for... I scrolled right past it. There we are. Why can't I buy? Because she doesn't have a space for it? She doesn't have space. She doesn't have an empty space! <laughs> One moment. Yes. Uh, shove that grease into this potion case, would you? Yeah, I definitely could use a few more bullets. Like, yes, she does have two stacks of them ready to go in her inventory there, but it really couldn't hurt to buy a few more. So... I'll do it. I've got the best prizes this side of Cormier. Oh, wait, do you know something about a temple? I've heard that the glade was once home to a temple of the old god of murder, Baal, at least until his death. When he died, he took most of his followers with him, and the temple is no exception. Okay, it's exactly the same text. Mention it because you wanted an arrow storage. That is the Diarnas Keep. Watchers Keep. Oh. I see. Okay. Well, I'm going to definitely be exploring this map before I look elsewhere, but I will... I will make a note here... Watchers keep for ammo case question mark. Okay, it's in my notes now. Hopefully I'll remember to check them. All right, bullets, 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 bullets. I'll just buy one stack because that way I can, it all stores in one spot. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Yes? And yes, I could pick up all this stuff on the ground and just sell it straight to him, but I don't feel like doing that right now. I... I'm not hurting for money in any way, shape, or form. I'm fine. Okay, so... If it must be done. Let's try this away. Okay, I can't go that away. We'll try over here instead. We'll try going... Why, why am I stopped at every turn? There's gotta be a way through. Well done, Minsk. Aha! Oh, this definitely looks like a way through. I'm, I'm feeling good about this. Oh, right! The short bow! Let's equip that before I forget. She's been using this regular flat short bow all this time. 
She should probably be able to do a lot more damage with a plus three, right? This way, then. Three more. <laughs> what is it? Indeed. Oh, hello. Fancy meeting you here with your full head of hair. Interesting how you're not on fire, Mr. Fire Giant. You will fall by my hand. <laughs> Opal, Sapphire, Zircon. Don't mind if I do, let me just tuck those away. Speak, it will be done. Feel the backhand of justice! And yeah, I mean, multiple plus threes do add up, so I, I have... So be it. I am your doom. The glory will be ours today. There seem to be a lot of soldiers around here. Weren't they all supposed to be at the siege? Take that and that. Fire giant's biggest fear is a miniature giant space hamster up the trouser leg. I mean, wouldn't you fear that? Yes. I mean, angry ju angry space hamsters. Man, it's just it never you never want to have to deal with an angry space Glory hamster. I play Overwatch. I space hamsters are, are mean. Now, where did that scroll get to? There it is. I'll help however I can. Okay, Ari does not need to I learn will. that. Oh, but Imowen can. Here, Imowen, have a spell that I'm going to completely forget to have you learn. Thank you. What is it? Certainly. Okay, nothing too useful up here besides a bear. Oh man, it's go it's gonna be great when someday in Baldur's Gate 3 I have somebody who can cast Speak with Animals. This is what you get for rushing on ahead. Oh, Minsk, 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 Minsk! Drink a potion, boo! around here seem to be like very much flesh and blood soldiers who are very angry to see me. Uh, I'm gonna have to be more tactical about this. This is getting ridiculous. Alright. Where am I? Is this me? No, that's Valgar. Alright, well, they're gonna start with Valgar then because Valgar is a mess. Uh, you go for this officer, Valgar. What I am... Oh, that's me. Okay. I will go for the skeleton warrior. You point, I punch. Minsk. 
Go for the cleric. I am ready. Shahira. Good luck with the other skeleton. Yes. Imowen. Go for the other cleric. What can I do? Airy, uh, back me up with the skeleton before it starts chewing on you, okay? Gotcha good. Okay, Valgar, you're not doing anything. So, uh, hit the cleric. Airy. This is a lot more exciting than any circus. Hit that cleric. Okay, have we finally cleaned up in here enough to perform a little loot? We do appear to have cleaned that item has been dropped. Alright, alright, alright. Give me a minute. Okay, this goes here. That goes there. That goes there. That goes in there. That goes in there. That goes in there. So does that. Maybe I should have sold some of this some of this jewelry and jewels to the merchant, but eh. You chuck that in there. Yes. I grab more jewels. What is it? Valgar. Take those. Swords, not words. Minsk. Grab that and that. Hmm? Airy, take that. Not that. Not that. What is it? Speak. All right. Without doubt. We, we gotta like work our way backwards along our fight path in order to find everything. You need something? Okay. Yes. Quickly and precisely. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that this is the pile that we already looked at. So, okay. Man, what a mess. But wait, there's more. I I don't like the looks of this. Okay. Where there's a temple, there is an entrance to a temple, right? I feel like there should be more than just this one little building, you know? Especially for how many soldiers were hanging around it. Well, I guess not. Try off the side of the map. Yeah, I was just thinking that because, yeah, uh, look at this, I have explored the vast majority of this map and obviously I have not found the temple, which means it's not here. Alright, what do we got here? Watchers Keep, 16 hours of travel, Siege Camp Unreachable, Saradish Unreachable, North Forest is where I am, Forest of Mir, the temple, traveling hours 8, and Marching Mountains, traveling hours 12. Okay. Forest.
forest of mirror it is. This is concerning. I, I don't like the ambient sound here. The ambient sound here is creepy. Aha! Oh, hi. Halt. Go no farther. I wish to speak with you, my old ward. Oh my goodness, it's a force ghost. Haha! <laughs> Gorion? Yes, Gorion. Have you forgotten all that I've taught you? Brought you up to be? Have you forgotten me? Everything I've done has been because of you, Gorion. How could I possibly forget you? What do you mean? What have I done? I've not forgotten you at all. You mean nothing to the old man. Begone! Or how can you be here? I don't believe this at all. I have not forgotten you at all. I tried to save you from your destiny. I tried to turn you into a force for good. And what have you done? Carved a path of blood and murder wherever you go. Hmm. You know, this doesn't sound right. I mean, I didn't get to know Garion terribly well in the first game before he was repeatedly stabbed. But he seemed much more of a realist to me. Most of the Harpers are, hilariously enough, uh, given all the everything else around Harpers, but most of the Harpers seem to be quite realists on this. If his ghost truly has been watching me, he knows for a fact that I have only killed anyone who has tried to kill me. I have not gone looking for trouble. Trouble has come to my door. You are a disappointment. You were supposed to be so much more, Foxwine. You were supposed to be something greater. And yet, in the end, you murdered even me! Why are you saying these things? I never murdered you. Saravok murdered you, not I. I've done what I can to survive without your help. Or Gorion will never, would never say these things. You are not he. You know, I'm feeling the last one. I'm feeling the last one very strongly here. You are not Gorion. You dare to presume too much. You ignore the truth, and you will be made to acknowledge it. Imagine having Saravok here would change the dialogue. Yeah, well... I saved you. I hid you from those who would hunt you. I taught you and enabled you to become what you are. I died for you. All of that is correct, yes. Why are you throwing it in my face now? And you have failed me in everything I hoped you would be. That is why I am murdered by you. Dude. You raised me to not know who or what I was. When trouble came to the doorstep, you did everything but tuck me under your arm like a football and run. Also, without telling me anything. You died without telling me anything. And in your dying instructions sent me to find two more harpers who also proceeded to not tell me what I needed to know. So forgive me if I disagree with your point of view on these issues. And Imowen, my second hope, you've turned her into a conspirator to your own failure. All her potential. Lost. How both of you disgust me so. You know, probably bringing Saravok along would have changed this particular thing, but there was absolutely no way that I was going to be uh, removing somebody that I trusted at my back from my party to bring in Saravok. Of all the... No. No, Saravok... Saravok can go out in the world... And if I have to take him out a second time, I will. But I'm not having him by my side where he has easy access to my precious, precious organs. Is 
is he gone? Uh, yeah, he, he walked out of the pocket dimension and disappeared. I haven't seen him since. Admittedly, I have only been to one place since then. Uh, I only just recently started the Throne of Baal, so I might run into him again, but as far as, as far as it goes, yeah, he's gone. Saravok's gone. No, no, Garion, don't say those things, please. Where have you come to, my lord? What have you done? So many bodies left in your wake, so much pain and destruction that you have caused. Why? Why? Once again, I have only ever killed those who attacked me. I have never started a fight, except with a door, and I lost. It's... I mean... But I've done so much good as well. I seek power and I have it. I do not need to explain myself. I've killed only when necessary to defend myself or others. I refuse to be judged by you, Garion. Or no, Garion would never say this. Never. Uh, okay, pity he is a great character. Yeah, maybe on another playthrough. Like, if I were playing a bit more evil, I would feel a bit better about having Saravok in my party. But, uh... As I've mentioned before, characters only get one chance to betray me, and I don't trust them after that point. As far as I'm concerned, Saravok betrayed me, and the plot forced me to accept him betraying me multiple times, and I wasn't about to give him another chance. I, I'm not the very forgiving sort. Me, personally, the person playing this, not the character. I have killed only when necessary to defend myself or others. Then you know nothing of yourself. You have learned nothing. You grow ever closer to being a slave of your blood. You will murder all that you love and die a monster. Garion, you're an asshole. I will not allow it. Saravok is still good on a good playthrough for reasons. I understand, though. Killed him on my first playthrough. <laughs> yeah, I didn't kill him. I chose not to kill him. I, I let him go out in the world. He is walking out in the world. He is alive. But yeah, once again, no access to my precious organs. Would you please stop hitting me with lightning? You see, I am correct. How many must die? What of your many former companions? How many are dead now? Many former companions. Oh, Garion, you really haven't been watching. Only one companion has died. One. And that was because he stabbed me in the back! <laughs> he died because I offered him the chance to live and walk away, and he chose to throw himself on my blade anyway for the sake of his stupid honor. One! One! I don't even need both hands! You haven't been watching after all, Garion. Can dance on the head of a pin as well. <laughs> Ryan, I find it highly suspicious that now is the time that you chose to set up. And also, are you going to hit me with lightning again? Because I do not appreciate it. You will well, that wasn't lightning. Who causes the prophecy to come true, my ward. Bow before me and renounce your life. This is pointless. I never cared for you and never will, old man. Or, no, you are in my head. I can feel it. This is a lie. Yeah, I'm going with the second one because, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie and tell him that I never cared for him. He was my father. He was my father in everything but genetics. This is a lie. Your power is too much. Feast upon your soul. 
There we go. See, it's not Garion after all. That explains why he kept hitting me with lightning. Okay, hands up. Anyone surprised? I'm certainly not. Oh boy, but this is messy. Okay, what do we got here? Master Wraith. Swamp Horror. Vampiric Wraith. Devil Shade. Vampiric Wraith. Swamp Horror. Devil Shade. Jahira says nothing even though she knew him the most. Yeah, the main thing here is that this was all written uh, for any possible group of companions that I might be running around with. So Jahira says nothing because just in case the player comes in without Jahira, well, there you go. But yeah, as soon as he was like, the trail of bodies in your wake, the companions that died, Nobody died. No one has died. There was one time in Baldur's Gate 1 that I got Imowen killed because I was having her scout ahead and yeah, bad things happened. But then I changed the settings to the game and now nobody has, nobody has ever died. I've sent companions away, but no one has died. But anyway, uh, that argument aside, I want to go for the Master Wraith, but I am closer to this Vampiric Wraith, so let me just do that. Imowen? No, that, not that one. Not that one, Imowen. Imowen, if you would go for the Swamp Horror, that would be great. Anyone romanced? Uh, in the... In the Siege of Dragonspear, I did romance... Oh. Oh man, I've managed to forget her name now. I'm so sorry. Uh, the guardswoman who was uh, companioning with us. I romanced her but good, but then I got accused of murder and exiled from the city. Well, not exiled from the city. I got accused of murder and I escaped from the city and then I got kidnapped by yet another asshole and I, I haven't seen her. Silka? Maybe? Blast. It's been so long. I'm terrible with names. But yeah, she was she was one of my companions during the first game. Uh, for the Siege of Dragonspear, not for the rest of the game. She was a Siege of Dragonspear specific character. Ah, Blast. What was her name? I don't... I wish I remembered. Uh, no. I I have not seduced anyone in two as yet. Uh, I was getting there uh, with one, but I did not want to be with him, and I sent him away. No baby. Baby zero. <laughs> And thank goodness, because I'm female. My character's female in this one. I do not want to fight pregnant. Nobody wants to fight pregnant. Where was I? Oh yes, I was telling people what to attack. Uh, Minsk, go for this... Actually, no. Go, go for this swamp horror. Jahira. You go for the devil shade. Belyar, you go for the Vampiric Wraith. Yes. Airy, I, I am feeling like a spell would be a good thing here. As soon as I figure out the right one. <laughs> Magic Instabirth. Well, I definitely haven't had a baby. You know what? Let's uh, let's bolt of glory this this uh, this dude. The master wraith feels feels like a bolt of glory is what this master wraith needs. After all the bolts he was putting into me.
You're just barely still here. Have a potion. What is everybody beating on at this point? Me and Minsk are beating on the same thing. That's that's not that's not efficient. All of that, and she didn't manage to get the spell off. That's it. Get the wraith. Vengeance. Imowen, walk over here, would you? Minsk, if you would peel off the wraith and go for the vampiric wraith, please. It's an odd time to bring that up, Chihira. It's a, it's a really odd time to bring that up. Alright. Everybody's alive? Right? Yes? Oh, what an interesting interlude that was. Uh, let's see, what was the name? What was the name of that annoying, not a paladin? I, I nearly romanced the annoying, not a paladin. But I didn't really want him, so I replaced him with Valgar. Anaman, yes, Anaman, yes. It is his master. The master come again. No, hold. No, it is but a vessel for the master's power. An abomination. Kill it. Kill them all in the name of Baal. Animan? A knob? No, he's not a knob. He just... He just really, uh... What's the right way of putting it? Uh... His self-righteousness blinded me to any good qualities that he may have had. I never liked him. Well, I found his abilities useful. And the whole, you know, storyline with the father thing was actually not badly done. I, I liked that. But Anaman himself... He was just, um, he was very well written as exactly the person that he is, which is a kind of person I do not like. Speak. All right. Uh, Minsk has this one in hand, so I'm going to go for the mage. Actually, no. No, switch up. Yes. I'm going to go for the cleric. Valgar is going to go for the mage. Jahira, I want you to go for the warrior. Imowen, back Jahira up. Eri, back Valgar up. Alright, everybody on the same page? You Not many good female character romance options. That I will definitely agree with. Armor, sharpen, and raring to go. It's okay. My character is not actually interested in romancing people. This, this version of Foxwine is much more of a get things done, worry about interpersonal relationships later type. You will fall by my hand. 
And besides, Minsk hasn't proposed, so she's not really all that interested. Who says what? Yes, if it must be done. Winnie the Pooh guy Minsk would have been a good option. <laughs> I mean, I, I, rest soon. I am weak when I am tired. Minsk is not the most is not a man of the most complicated thoughts. But I really appreciate just how uh, what is the right what is the word? What is it? I appreciate the way he sees the world. It will be done. The world seems so easy, the way that Minsk sees it. I envy that. There's good, there's evil, there's kicking the butt of evil, there is supporting good. Time to move? What Thank else do you, you need? Nymph's tear, that seems important. Uh, pass that over to me. And actually, uh, send that over to Minsk. I'm so happy you brought me with you. I never imagined that we would be doing such great things. Yeah, but I, I feel like the the nymph's tear is important, so I think I should hang on to that. Speak. Certainly. I feel like this could be part of what I'm here to look for. Oh. Oh, what have we here? I can't help but remember what the forests in the north look like from the sky. They're, they're so majestic. Well, I can't identify these bullets, but maybe Aerie can. Plus threes. Oh, now I have 50 of them. Okay, if she's not going to use this, let's just let's just send the Yunstones over to Minsk to stuff into the bag of holding. And no, I don't have any consistent way that I pronounce that because who ever told me how to pronounce yes. that particular word? Without doubt. So yeah, if Minsk offered, I would have his child in a heartbeat. Come, come, you have the powerful one who is the spawn of the dead master. <laughs> Nyali knew you would come, she did. Oh, then Nyali knows how she'll go, right? Who is this Nyali you speak of, witch? How does someone live here amidst all these creatures? The dead master? What are you talking about? Or beware, witch, I will brook no tricks from you. Uh, what are you talking about, the dead master? You should know, spawn child, you should know. Nihili served the dead master once, and Nihili is I. Hee <laughs> hee, but so many questions you have. Questions, questions. Answer all your questions, Nihilee will. Oh yes, Nihilee has been waiting for you, and she knows why you come, she does. Oh, do you? What do you think I'm coming about? T do tell. It is that boy, the traitorous fool of a half-giant boy of mine. You come because of Yagashura. My boy has been a pain for you and me both. You wish his blood, yes? What do you mean, boy of mine? Yagashura can't be your son. Are fire giant women this small? Can we have some discussions about size queens now, maybe? <sighs> you wish revenge on him? What for? Yes, I need to know how to kill him. Tell me how. Or how do I know I can even trust you? She birthed him? Ouch. Hmm. Uh, you know, I don't really want to think about it too much. So, you risk revenge on him, what for? 
Because a betrayer is the boy. Did Niley not raise the boy? Did Niley not teach the boy the old tricks? Yes. And did the boy and the and the boy did leave Niley here to rot. Steals her heart even. Oh. Oh, I see. I see. You ra raised Yagashura? He can't be your son. Then tell me how to kill him, or how do I know I can even trust you? Adopted. Yes, let, let's us all hope adopted. He can't be your son. Nay, the boy did not spring from Nihilie's loins, and we're all so glad about that. Nihilie did see him for the spawn child he was while but a babe, and stole him from the crib, raised him here in this temple as her own, did she? Oh, you did him no favors, lady. Why would you risk revenge on your own son, then? Then tell me how to kill him. Or how do I know I can even trust you? Why would you risk revenge on your own son? Okay, that's the same, the same text as before. Alright, then tell me how to kill him. That, Nihilie will do. Hee <laughs> hee! The traitorous boy will not even see it coming. Oh no, Nihilie will have her revenge. Listen closely, then, spawn child. Can you imagine being raised by the female version of Golem? Can you imagine what that childhood was like? Once a great cleric of Baal was Nihilie, but then great Baal is dead and Nihilie is forced to turn to the older arts to survive. Nihilie ste steals the spawn child Yagashura to raise in this temple, did she? A new lord of murder did Nihilie hope to create. Foolish old Nihilie. Teaches the boy the old tricks, did she? Teaches the boy to remove his heart, did she? The boy has removed his heart, and he will keep it fired and bathed in magical flames. While his heart burns, no harm may come to Yagashura. No death may come until his heart is quenched. Ah! Ah! So I must find his heart and quench it. How? Only Nihilie knows the words and the arts to extinguish the boy's heart, she does. But Nihilie needs her own heart to use the arts, and the boy stole her heart years ago. Keeps it, he does. Finds Nihilie's heart and Yagashura's heart both, spawn child, brings them both to her. Nihilie will quench his heart forever then. Hee <laughs> hee, so surprised, so shocked will he be. Where would I find these hearts? What kind of reward will you give me if I retrieve these hearts? Very well, I so seek out these hearts in return. Or, no, I do not trust you. I will not help you do this. Now, here's the thing. The second answer is the answer of somebody who does not have two brain cells to rub together. Because she's just said, you know, his heart... Is, uh, has this unquenchable flame that makes him immortal. You can't kill him unless the flame is quenched, and only I know how, but I won't do it unless you find my heart. So what reward will she give me if I bring both hearts to her? She'll quench his heart! <laughs> Sorry for being loud, but it's just... Hmm. Alright, where would I find these hearts? The boy has collected followers. Live with them in the fire mountains, he will. Nihilie knows not where. He, go, he will keeps her poor heart there in hiding. His as well, Nihilie is sure. What kind of reward will you give me if I retrieve these hearts? Very well, I shall seek out these hearts in return. Or, no, I do not trust you. I will not help you do this. All right, I'll seek out these hearts and return. Yes, he, he Nihilie will have her revenge. Oh, yes. Go, spawn child. Go and find Nihilie's poor heart. Bring me the boys as well. Nihilie cannot wait. You can't wait. I can't wait. Nobody can wait. Okay, anything else interesting around here? Anything at all? Anything that might prove... Useful? No? Okay, then. Hey, nobody will ever accuse me of not having two brain cells to rub together. Well, actually, plenty of people will accuse me of that, but none of them will be right.
All right, so we need to go to the temple conveniently in the mountains. Now, question I is. I more time in the forest. Oh, I feel so alive. Well, about that. How about we have a nice long rest before we head out to the fire temple? How does that sound, everybody? Are we agreed? Yes? Okay then. <laughs> Lovely fire and a tent that we pulled out of our ass. I mean, yes, I could have gone back to the pocket dimension and camped there. Have a slight detour to watch us keep. That is a long detour. This is a okay, airy. Oh, not, not that one. In Berevan's name, it shall be done. There we are. Okay, use your belt, Aerie. There you go. What is it? See, the thing is, the temple is pretty the close to here. Will. Oh, I should have saved. Why didn't I save? But yeah, the, the Watcher's Keep is 24 hours away, whereas the Marching Mountains are only four. Uh... All right, I'll I'll try Watcher's Keep first. Rumors of ancient ruins and incredible treasures often reach the ears of the party as they travel the length of the Sword Coast, but no tale is so lucrative as that of Watcher's Keep. The ruin still stands, it is said. And a religious order known as the Knights of the Vigil have made a call wide and far for heroes to aid their dangerous cause. Details are scarce, and curiosity leads the party quickly to the glade of the keep itself. A deserted place that whispers in the wind of the most ancient evils. Huh. Okay. Well, here we are, one day later, saving the game. Do what you want, but you won't regret it. <laughs> Speak, quickly and precisely. If this ends up being like the wizard tower and I get end up being stuck in here for a real time month, these are runes of warding. They speak of the imprisoned one and are sealed with Helm's symbol. Huh. Okay. Oh, goody. Plenty of people who are named. Uh. Let's start with Audrin. Uh, the child of Baal has come. We had hoped that our call for aid would draw you here. Praise to the Watcher for hearing our prayers. Somebody who's actually glad to see me? That's weird. Praise be to Helm. Does this mean we have a chance, Audrin? Does that does this mean our duty is not lost to us? Be at peace, Sister Garvina. Foxwine has yet to hear our story, yet alone agreed to aid us. We get ahead of ourselves here. Please accept my apology, Foxwine. Watcher's Keep is a long journey from any nearby settlement, and your trip could not have been an easy one. Well, I'm in a hurry. Get on with it. What do you want? I would ha be happy just knowing who you are and what you want. Or you're an inch from death, fool. Stop falling all over yourself and say something interesting. Oh, that's just mean. That's just plain mean. Uh, who are you and what do you want? Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Brother Audrin, currently the leader of the Knights of the Vigil. We are a small sect that was given a most solemn charge by the Vigilant One, Helm himself. A charge we are unable to fulfill, sadly. Indeed, Helm appeared to us during the time of troubles, when all gods but he walked Faerun as mortals. A great evil had been imprisoned, he said, and we were to be its keepers. The side story is best done in stages. It's totally optional, but rewarding. Huh. 
Watchers keep, this ruin you see before you was once a great prison for the most terrible foes of the gods. It was abandoned for many, many centuries until Helm came to us with his news. The old prison would not hold this great evil for long, he said. Our order would have to maintain a vigil to watch for the day when the evil would begin to break the great seals and escape. That day has come, Foxwine. The great evil struggles within and has infected Watcher's Keep to the point where we cannot bypass the creatures and foul magic that bo blocks our path. It is our shame that we are too weak to get to the lower vaults and enact the ritual that will strengthen the old seals once again. Our need is obvious, then. We need a group to enter the keep and descend to the lower vaults so they may repair the mystic seals. Might you, might you do this, Foxwine? And what is in it for me if I do? Just what kind of creature is imprisoned here? I'll help you, but I need to know what to do. Or, no, forget it, I've got better things to do. Hmm. Just what kind of creature is imprisoned here? We do not know. Helm called it the Imprisoned One only, saying it was a being of great cunning and power, enough so that Helm himself was forced to deal with it. Interesting. A god was forced to deal with your Imprisoned One. No ordinary apparition, this. If enough of the seals remain unbroken, however, the Imprisoned One need not even be encountered. We just do not know. That is why our need is so dire, Foxwine. And what is in it for me if I do this? I'll help you, but I need to know what to do. Or, no, forget it, I've got better things to do. Now the thing here is, once again, I'm going to be forced to give the answer that is the least intelligent, because he's already said what needs to be done. A path needs to be cleared for them so that they can get down and renew the thingamabobs. Pillar Fox, thank you so much for the subscription. Much appreciated. That will let you earn channel points so much faster towards my various rewards. It will allow you access to the speak command at any in any of my streams and not just the Thursday ones. And you're not going to see any ads now. Congratulations. Excellent choice. Okay. Well, I already know we need to clear a path so that they can renew the seals. But I'm going to ask what I need to do anyway, because that's the only answer that leads to it. Now, why did it just play that again? Not that I dislike my boop, but why did it play it twice? That's very strange. All right, I need to know what to do. You, you will aid us? Ah, praise to Helm. Praise Helm, he has answered our prayers. Thank you, Foxwine. Brother Pole will give you what you need and explain. Come, let us ascend to the top of Watcher's Keep. Oh, so we have to fight our way all the way down. Great. Here, we are atop the ancient prison at last. Before us is the entrance into its first level first obstacle towards reaching the lower vault. Ah, and of course I forgot to mention my lovely, lovely follower emotes. <laughs> Alright, entrance to the lower vault, huh? In order to enter, as well as leave, you will need the proper holy symbol. Talk to Brother Paul. He is our elder and can give you what you need as well as answer any of your questions. Aye, I know a fair amount of lore about the old seals within. The evil that has infected this place, however, that I know little about. Any supplies you need can be acquired through Sister Garlina. The shop here sells arrow belts? Oh, okay. Alright, so Sister Garlina is the shop and Brother Paul is basically the entrance portal. You may have access to all the resources of our order, Foxwine, at a fair price, of course. Would that we were wealthy enough to offer it to you for free. Who is ever wealthy enough to offer me stuff for free? May the Vigilant One walk by your side, Foxwine. I pray that your God's blood lends you power enough to ensure your success. We all do. Omnimnius. I love it. Alright. Uh, 
Sister Garlina. Let's start with her. Hi. You may have access to both our healing skills and supplies, as well as whatever equipment we have in store, Foxwine. Come, I will show you what we have available in our stores. Okay, let's see here. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So many scrolls, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling the scroll, 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 scroll. <laughs> There's a lot. Alas, gem bag and potion case. Short sword of mask? What the heck is this doing in here? Why why do the helm why do the helm people have a mask sword? Its blade is highly prized by those who serve the Shadow Lord as well as any who engage in shadowy business. Fifteen percent chance per hit that target is entangled for four rounds. Dang. Why do the helm people have a mask sword? Okay, well, alas, it does not appear that there is an ammo belt in here. Great sadness. I just remember it being here, maybe just inside. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. I mean, this sounds like something interesting to do, so I do not regret coming here, but, uh, yeah, I did get my hopes up a little, I must admit. Alright, let's get to identifying some shiz. Alright, Wand of Monster Summoning? This wand will summon 12 HD of monsters, which appear within the area of effect and attack the user's enemies. They retain, remain until the spell duration expires or the monsters are slain. These creatures vanish when slain. If no opponent exists to fight and the wizard can communicate with them, the summoned monsters can perform other services for the summoning wizard. Huh. Okay, the rest appears to be pretty ordinary. So let's just sell off everything but that wand of monster summoning. I have finally played this game long enough that plus twos are just like, oh, that's just sail bait. Off it goes. <laughs> uh, let's see, was there anything else? Oh, I finally have enough points for sing mode. Oh, but when to use it? That is an ex that that is an excellent question. <laughs> the choices, the decisions. Okay, I believe that's everybody who had stuff to sell. I'm probably just going to sit on the gems for a bit longer. Look, decisions are hard. Don't judge me. <laughs> I know decisions are hard. You know what? I will sell off some stuff. Like, all this jewelry, I know for a fact I'm not going to need it. So this and this and this and this. And this and this. And definitely this. I never know what gems I'm going to need when, though, so you and I are very different beasts. Well, I, I am hoarding stuff. I am hoarding stuff, but the fact of the matter is that my inventory space is very limited. So I am hoarding a whole bunch of gems. There is actually a whole bunch Sword, of equipment. There is actually a whole bunch of equipment that I am hoarding in my bag of holding here with Minsk. Uh, you know, just in case I need them. But basic stuff? Stuff that doesn't have a specific name? Nah, that's sailbait. 
off it goes, whoosh, into the void. Don't need it, money doesn't have weight in this game. So, yes, okay, and we speak to Brother Pole without hesitation. Good day to you. Helms praises upon you, child, for your aid. As Brother Audrin said, there are two things you will need within, and I shall give them to you now. The first is the holy symbol that, will, that shall allow you to pass through the seals of the prison. Do not lose it, child. Without it, you cannot enter the keep. Or, if you are within, you will be trapped forever. The second is the ritual scroll, which will repair Helm's seal upon the keep. It need only be read aloud in the presence of the imprisoned one. You require no special training to do so. Huh. Is calling you child patronizing? I can never tell. Well, uh, sometimes it is. In this particular case, it is not. This guy, uh, not only is he a high-level cleric, but he's also significantly older than me. So uh, he's allowed to call me child because cleric, who is older than me. It's fine. I will, it, it's, it's not patronizing for a cleric who is older than me to call me child. All the clerics either call me child or sister, and I'm fine with that. Old man, look at my life. <laughs> Reaching the imprisoned one is the difficulty. Watcher's Keep was built many ages ago to contain great horrors that walked Faerun, but it was abandoned centuries before Helm restored its purpose. When Helm came to us, he asked half our order to sacrifice themselves, to become spirits guarding the keep and adding to the ancient seals that were already in existence. Ooh, Helm, dang. Didn't know you had it in you. The spirits will guard against all who enter. They cannot be reasoned with. Add to this the evil witch is being drawn to this place by the infection of the imprisoned one. All these obstacles must be bypassed. When you finally reach the lowest level, you must open the final seal to gain access to the imprisoned one himself. I do not know what state he will be in. Read the ritual quickly before he attacks. Have you any other questions for me then, child? How many levels are there in the keep? How do I get into and out of the keep? Why do I not just... Why do I just not destroy the imprisoned one and get it over with? Is there anything you can tell me about what lies within the keep? Or, no, I don't think so. Huh. How many levels are there? I believe there are five separate levels within the keep, the fifth of which is the lowest vault that allows access to the imprisoned one himself. Each will have a seal that prevents access to the next level. Okay, five levels in Watcher's Keep. Okay. I know little of what manner of seals are in the place, however, or how they might be overcome. They are meant to prevent simple access, however, so unlocking the seals will not be simple. Well, by preference, it would be to unlock them in a way that they would be relockable later, because the idea would be to you know, get down to the bottom, read the re-imprisoning spell, and then go back up to the top, locking the doors behind us as we go, so that they're all, you know, taken care of. Uh-oh. <laughs> Have you any other questions for me then, child? Is there anything you can tell me about what lies within... Stream, where'd you go? Oh, no, 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 no. Is it... Mine still says it's connected. What the heck's going on here? Hold on, sorry about the sudden amounts of silences. The, the game does not like being put in the background. Baby does not like being put in a corner. It died for like two seconds. Oh, oh, I see. All right, can you tell me about what lies within the keep? Very little, child. 
We have been into the first level, combating the creatures that assaulted us, but we were driven back before we could examine the first seal. It is an ancient archive and temple, long unused. Yours dropped out too. Dang, I... I was not given any notice that the stream had dropped. Oh, very, very weird. Very, very weird. It may be a temple to Helm. I do not know. I did not get enough time to examine everything. I would suspect, however, that the clerics that once existed within were able to access the second level in some manner. Wimps couldn't even do the first- Yeah, I know! Many of the old tomes within seem to be in good condition. Perhaps somewhere there may be found more information on the other levels and their seals. Oh, sounds like I'm going to be doing a bunch of reading. Any other questions for me then, child? Alright, how do I get in and out? The entrance to the first level is here, at the top of the keep. You may only enter or leave through it with the holy symbol in your possession, of course. The other levels all have doors that exit out to the side of the keep, but their seals may only be unlocked with the holy symbol from within, not from without. Once they are opened, however, you may re-enter through them. Ah, I see. So you're expected to do, like, one floor at a time, not binge the entire tower in a single go? Have you other questions for me, then? Uh... I mean, should I ask this question about him destroying the imprisoned one to get it over with? I mean, if it's something that even Helm couldn't destroy, I don't know that there's anything I can do, child of the god of murder or not. Zero context. Yeah. Well, Helm imprisoned this thing in here, and only refers to it as the imprisoned one. And Helm is a god. Helm is a really strong god with a lot of worshippers in this universe. Uh, something that Helm couldn't destroy, that Helm had to lock up and be like, okay, good enough, dust off his hands. I am concerned about my ability to kill something like that. So you're the protagonist. You could do it all in one go, up to you and your ability. Uh. Alright, why don't I just destroy the thing? Oh no, no, the imprisoned one must not be killed, if indeed he even can be. Helm has strictly forbidden us from even attempting, although I do not know why. Perhaps death, too, would be a form of freedom. Well, if he's a soul walker. Have you any other questions for me? No, I think I've actually asked all of the questions. As you desire. Helm's blessing upon you, child. I don't know. I, I, will, I will think about it. Okay, first things first, let's save the game. In we go. Um. <laughs> oh, Peller Fox, meet Mad Lib McGuffin. Like, Mad Lib McGuffin, meet Peller Fox. You've never met each other, but, uh, Heller, just uh, don't don't mind Madlib telling me to kill everything. It's it's fine. She's like the devil on my shoulder. It's it's all good. This it's all right. <laughs> I can talk to the archivist. Cold, so very cold. Okay. Uh, do you mind if we look in your box? Because yes. we'd really like to look in your box. All right, all right. Interesting. All right, thank you. Oh, no, not that one. What is in the box? Uh, let's see... Bracers. 
bullets, crossbow bolts, basic arrows, darts, antidote. I will take the antidote and the bracers, thank you. Alright, bracers go over here, antidote goes over here. <laughs> Don't call us out like this. Ball is the god of murder, and Ball is my character's father. Both of these things are very true. But I have spent both of my both of my Baldur's Gate playthroughs so far trying desperately not to be my father. Sorry, sorry, the uh antisocial hobos guild. <laughs> Good evening, Green. Welcome back. <laughs> antisocial hobos guild. Trying desperately not to be my father. That yeah, yeah. Welcome to both my playthroughs. I spent both my playthroughs with people being like, oh, You're a child of Ball! You're going to murder everything and everyone! I'm just like, no, I'm not like my father. I am not my father. I didn't even know who my father was until like three days ago. Please stop! <laughs> Alright. What do you want? M-O-N. I want Just you to Michael's disarm mind. that. Well, except for the torture and all. And Woo, Mula. I will take the wand too. I I'll admit the archivist is giving me a few concerns, but I would embrace my birthright so hard. Yeah, that's that's something I am saving for a future playthrough. At some point, in sometime in the future, on my own, not on stream, I am going to play an evil run through probably all three games. It will take me an incredibly long time. I may well hate myself by the end of it, but I'm going to do it anyway. What is it? But this run, this run is my goody two-shoes run because Minsk. Oh lord, I love Minsk. If it must be done. Oh, books. History of Sembia, History of Shadowdale, History of Shadowdale 2, Squeak, History of Shadowdale 3, Somebody is storing throwing weapons in this bookcase for some reason. I'm not sure. I've, I'm pretty sure I've read the Shadowdale histories, but I'm not sure if I've read Sembia, so... The land of Sembia was settled by humans coming into the Sea of Fallen Stars from the south, and was originally chosen for its stands of huge, high-quality Illyrwood timber, so prized in shipbuilding. I hate that. I hate that. That. Mm. So prized in shipbuilding. However, as the forests were cleared over the years, the tree cutters came into increasing conflict with elves that feared the loss of their entire wood, as well they should. This would undoubtedly have occurred had not the hastily gathered mercenary troops of the fledgling land been defeated by the elves at Singing Arrows, 884 DR. This battle convinced distant Chonda to abandon its holdings in the region and allow the immigrant Sembians to establish their independence, though as little more than a collection of rival city-states, much like the Moon Sea or Vast of today. It also set the stage for the appearance of the Raven. The young country grew strong as farms prospered in the newly cleared lands. Craftsmen arrived from the south to take advantage of this chance to acquire land and wealth, bringing their trades with them. Oh dear, oh. Rothavir the Raven identified the city-states and towns in the face of the continuing elven menace. Oh, sorry, unified, not identified, unified the city-states and towns in the face of the continuing elven menace, air quotes, and insisted on maintaining a standing army, which he kept in practice by policing Sembia's borders and improving its roads. At this time, 913 DR, Sembia became as a true nation. The Moon Seas, Dragon Seas, mineral wealth was discovered by humankind at about this time, and pressure began to grow for a trade road through the elven woods to make Sembia the world's gateway to all these riches. The Raven went alone as an envoy to the elven court. 
There, he asked the elders of their council to approve a road open to humans linking Sembia to the shores of the Dragon Sea. An earlier road had been destroyed during the conflict and was now overgrown. Raven proposed that the elves choose the route and retain control of it and the woods around it so that no woodcutting or human settlement would occur. The elves had earlier made similar arrangements with the Dalesmen and had no difficulty with the concept of such an agreement. However, the inhabitants of Bellarsdale, now Harrowdale, refused the proposal, not wanting or needing such a road at that time. Curious, since later a ruler of Harrowdale commissioned the disastrous Halfax Trail. The elves, not wishing to offend longtime allies, refused Raven's request. Rebuffed, the raven then threatened to exterminate the isolated elves in Amothoi, the last in battle remnant of the elves in Sembia, if the elven court did not cooperate. If the road were built, however, they would be free to trade or not trade as they wished. The elves agreed under this pressure, and Sembia's financial future was secured. Hillsfar, on the shores of the Dragon Sea, became a commercial meeting ground between humankind and elves, as did Elven Tree. The route the elves chose ran past the base of the Standing Stone as a reminder of earlier, less hostile dealings between humans and elves. Over the years, the elves of Amothoi came north to join their brethren or slipped away to seek Evermeet, leaving their wood to gradually disappear. Sembia grew rich under merchant leaders of increasing wisdom such as Sayre, for whom Sayre was named, and Selgar, for whom Chenselgaunt was named as Selgaunt. Before his death, Ralthfair the Raven saw that these merchants had a strong standing council of merchant elders to advise them, and to ensure that no ruler could hold on to power by force of arms. Then this far-sighted man, creator of a nation, now half-blind and infirm from old war wounds, rode north into the elven woods and disappeared. None know what happened to him or where his bones lie, save perhaps some few elder elves. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, history of Shadowdale One. The fall of Asmere, last drow marshal of the Twisted Tower. The drow rule of Shadowdale lasted until the early 900s Dale Reckoning, when the increased human population in the area brought the Dark Elves into conflict with their now more numerous neighbors. The humans were the Dalesmen who a millennium earlier had crossed the Dragon Reach and made peace with the Elves of Myth Draenor, settling at the borders of the great woods that was the elven home. The drow soon found themselves under continual attack, and most of those who held overground settlements retreated back below. The last powerful drow leader was Asmir, the marshal of the Twisted Tower in its last drow-held days. Asmir oversaw the last retreat of the drow holdings in the face of human uprising, and held the citadel against a year-long siege. With supplies and slaves brought up from the Underdark directly into the tower, the drow could have conceivably held out forever. However, a human slave, family histories in the Dales indicate a number of possible individuals, poisoned the well in the tower and the citadel was easily overrun. Asmare's body was not found among the dead, leading some to believe that he escaped back into the depths to rejoin his people. Noting the fact that he would have had to explain to his matriarch how he lost Shadowdale, it is much more likely that, should Asmir have survived, he went into voluntary exile, hiding from both human and drow. Given that this occur occurred only 400 years ago, it is certainly possible that Asmir still lives. Okay. I am pretty sure I hadn't read that yet. Good lie. All right. Ashaba becomes first lord of Shadowdale. Upon taking the Twisted Tower and removing the drow yoke from the people, the Dalesmen had fully established the Dale of Shadowdale, with its seat of power in the tower itself. Its first lord was a water wizard who had aided in the final attack, Ashaba, who was great in age when he ascended and ruled peacefully for forty years thereafter. It is said that Ashaba realized he was dying and turned himself to water, merging with the river. Since that time, the river, the ford, and the twisted tower all bear his name. Before passing on, Ashaba chose one of his trusted lieutenants as the new lord of Shadowdale. Presented to the people of the Dale, he was made the new lord by acclamation. In an additional honor, the pendant worn by Ashaba was therefore recognized as a symbol of the lordship in the Dale Lens, and was possessed by each of the successive lords following. Okay. 
Jodath and the Tirist Massacre. The past hundred years have been an example of the best and worst of the lords of Shadowdale. All have been nonative to the Dalelands, though all made the land their home. A century ago, the lord of the, of the Dales was one Jodath, a stiff-necked agnostic who desired the power of any god, good or evil, and used force to back up his beliefs. During this time, there was a great deal of religious persecution, including a massacre of Tirus on Watcher's Knoll. Jodath was eventually killed by a beast of the Nether Plain summoned by parties unknown, which then proceeded to rampage through the Dale. The beast was killed and Shadowdale rescued by the spellcasters Omri and Siloon. Sy Siloon. Omri was proclaimed Lord by acclamation. Okay. Interesting material does not actually lead me to anything for what is going on here, though. That was that one. What about this one? Icewind Dale story? I mean, maybe. I have not actually played Icewind Dale, either on tabletop or the game itself. So I would not... Uh, I would not know that exactly myself. Or even vaguely myself, now that I think about it. Okay, let's see here. History of Shadowdale 4. History of Shadowdale 5. History of Shadowdale 6. History of Shadowdale 7. Onwards and forwards, I guess. History of Shadowdale, Omri rules in peace. The longest period of peaceful rule was by Lord Omri and his wife Siloon, better known as the Witch of Shadowdale. They ruled over the community for 40 years, a period of extended peace with their neighboring Dales, nations, and the Elven peoples. It was this very peace and power which made the Dale the target for attacks and sabotage by the Black Network Zentarum. They sought, and still seek, to control the trade from the Moon Sea to the Sword Coast, and desired to make Shadowdale a vassal state of Zentil Keep. Lord Omri's rule ended tragically when he was assassinated by Zentish agents. Okay. History of Shadowdale. Jordan the False Lord. Lord Omri was assassinated by Zentarum agents, who in turn were captured and killed by the wa warrior Jordan. Jordan, with the pendant of Ashaba in hand, the symbol of lordship in the Dales, proceeded to present himself as the new lord and was so acclaimed by the people. It was unknown to the people that Jordan was also an agent to the Zentarum and that the entire proceeding had actually been a ruse. Jordan abandoned the Twisted Tower, instead establishing himself in Castle Crag, east of Shadowdale. His court was soon overrun with agents of the Black Network. When the people eventually revolted, Zentil Keep sent peacekeeping forces to maintain Jordan's rule. Siloon, Lord Omri's widow, now aware of the deception but a firm pacifist, did her best to keep the Dale healthy and intact during Jordan's evil rule. Well, points for sticking by her guns, I suppose, but also... Lady, you helped defeat a monster. Defeat another monster. All right, Kelvin kills Jordan. Lord Jordan's rule of Shadowdale ended when he encountered Kelvin Aronson, also called the Blackstaff. The story at the time was that Jordan accepted an invitation from Kelvin to visit Waterdeep, and there he took ill and died. In reality, Jordan ambushed Kelvin as the mage was leaving Shadowdale, and the Blackstaff killed him. In either case, Kelvin took hold of the Pendant of Ashaba, the symbol of the Lordship in the Dales, and returned to Waterdeep with it, promising to send a suitable candidate for Lordship to the Dales. Jordan had ruled for five years, and without his advocacy, Castle Crag was abandoned and the Zentil Keep troops routed. Jordan's previously chosen successor was a Mel... Mel... Melvanton named Lyran, but without the Pendant, this individual was considered a pretender to the throne. Definitely not Icewind. The Jordan name just... Ah, I see, I see. Alright, that was six. On to seven. Lords accepted by acclamation. The acclamation of the people has formed the basis for choosing the Lord of Shadowdale since the routing of the evil Lord Jordan by Kelvin Blackstaff. 
Usually, a predecessor will step down as opposed to dying in office, and his chosen successor will be approved by the populace at large. The system has had its drawbacks, as will be shown below, but in general it has served the independent, self-willed people of the Dale very well. They have avoided the genetic lottery of which good bureaucracies and bad kingships have made. A quote from the Venerable Elminster. The symbol of the lordship is the pendant of Ashaba, a light device owned by the original wizard and used to determine the rightful o lord of the Dale. Okay. Uh, still not entirely what I was looking for, and that's all the bookshelves in here. Speak. Uh, thankfully the archivist does not seem to object to me touching his things, so that helps. But somebody who will object to me touching their things would be this stone golem. I shall make this quick for you. Okay, all right. One stone golem just hanging out in a room, otherwise empty. Giant troll. Oh, two trolls. Blast, I took all the flame blades off everybody. One moment while I do a quick equipment check. Uh, let's see. I've got poison. And I've got... Yeah, I've got... I've got poison and fire. And... Valgar has Valgar has acid. So Yes. Uh I will go for this one. I'll aid you if I can. Valgar will go for this one. We'll just divide everybody else up between them. Mince and booze and brandy. Minsk, you go for that one, please. I await your move. Shahira, join me. Ari and Ari and Imowen, I just trust that you know what you're shooting at. Oh, there's three. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Four? There's four. Oh, now they're now they're spirit trolls. Great. What is it? Spectacular. Okay, me. Name it. And Imowen. Every and Minsk, since he's standing on this side. Jahira. What is it? Balgar. Mm -hmm. And Eri on the other way. And then everybody gang up on this one. Okay, everybody in the same number of pieces as they walked in here? Yes? More bookshelves. I'm gonna end this stream just by reading a whole bunch of stuff. I, I see, I see that now. Okay, well. Certainly. Wait, wait, no. Yes? There's more troll. Bold so creature! I am your doom. Here. Okay, plan C. Without doubt. We check the rest of the room for monsters. Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. Emily. No I want you all. to check that box, please. Oh, wow, that's a lot of money. And a tattered parchment. This fragment of an ancient and tattered scroll is inscribed with ornate calligraphy, which reads... Let the bell be rung forth a second time in honor of the Holy One, as his name shall forever ring across the lands. Let the ritual candle be lit in honor of the Holy One, as his name shall forever be a glowing beacon to the faithful. This is important. This is important. I'll take that. I'll pass that over to me. Yes, there we go. What is it? Quickly and precisely. A 
another tattered parchment. Elminster's Ecologies, Appendix 3A. History of Shadowdale 8. History of Shadowdale 9. History of Shadowdale 10. History of Shadowdale 11. And History of Shadowdale 12. We're going to be getting a lot of History of Shadowdale tonight. But first, Tattered Parchment. This fragment of an ancient and tattered scroll is inscribed with ornate calligraphy, which reads, And the sacred book shall be placed upon the altar. Let the consecrated wisdom of the holy word best the faithful. Let the bell ring forth the final time in joyous celebration of his name. Praised and triumphant to eternity's end. The ritual is complete. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that one as well. Elminster's Ecologies, Appendix 3A. This time-worn tome is written by the sage Elminster and apparently part of a much larger body of work, containing detailed studies of most of the strange creatures from around Faerun. The appendix seems to refer to newly discovered variations on normal breeds of creatures, of particular interest, dense puddings, a relative of the slimes and molds, this pudding is relatively normal, except when exposed to electricity or fire. When this occurs, it splits into new puddings and can therefore be very dangerous. Fire Trolls A new form of troll thought to have been created by sorcerous fire giants for use as servants and guards. They are similar to regular trolls in most respects, except for their lava temperature skin and burning touch. Once they are defeated, they can only be permanently killed by cold or acid. Well, I just happen to have a cold mace lying around in a bag of holding here somewhere. Fission slime. An offshoot of the slimes and molds, this particular slime will spit into new and independent creatures when hit. It is vulnerable to fire, which will kill it permanently. Magic Golems. This rare type of golem is formed from pure magical energy and is completely immune to spellcraft as well as enchanted weapons. To my knowledge, only weapons without enchantments have any effect- Oh no! Well, we're boned. Marilis. While this is apparently a legitimate form of demon, it is one that only an exceptional few have encountered and survived. The Marilith is a slick-armed demon with a human female front half and the back half of a snake. She is incredibly quick and deadly, and on top of her martial powers with six swords, she casts spells as well. Fighters should beware. In addition to being immune to normal weapons and minor enchantments, this demon also likes to cast protection from magical weapons, which must be dispelled if a fighter has to have any chance with his armaments. I mean, unless you're a monk, your fists... Yeah, we don't have any monks in the party, and we have no non-enchanted weapons. All the weapons have a plus. All of them. Every last one. Ah. Uh, you know what? I'm taking that one, too. History of Shadowdale, the time of no lords. During the period when Kelvin Blackstaff held the pendant of Ashaba, the symbol of the lordship in the Dales, Siloon, widow of the murdered Lord Omri, was the de facto ruler of Shadowdale, though these years were known as the time of no lords. Siloon and an adventuring company known as Maine's Band were responsible for driving out the Zentil Keep forces and keeping at bay the monsters in the area. The Twisted Tower, the traditional seat of leadership, remained uninhabited following its abandonment by the evil Lord Jordan, and neither Siloon nor the companions of Man Maine's Band wished to assume the mantle of leader. With time, Maine's Band passed on to other lands and adventures. No, I mean, high-level monk fists are magical weapons. A normal fighter can punch for non-magical... Oh, oh, I see. That's gonna suck for all of us, but thank you for letting me know, Green. That's that's useful. Alright, eight, nine. Doust Soulwood becomes Lord of Shadowdale. Three winters following his defeat of the evil Lord Jordan, Kelvin Blackstaff found a suitable candidate to assume leadership of the Dales, or rather a group of candidates. 
They were the Knights of Mithdranor, so named to show their interest in the Elven territories and their connection with the Elven peoples, and Kelvin gave them the Pendant of Ashaba, the symbol of the Lordship, in return for services rendered to himself and to Shadowdale. Their leader, the ranger Florin Falconhand, refused the honor of Lordship. It was therefore passed to Doust Solwood, who was made the new lord with the support of Florin and Siloon, wife of the murdered Lord Omri, and apparently also the secret support of Kelvin as well. Doust reoccupied the Twisted Tower, driving out the last agents of the Black Network. He also reinstituted many of Hashaba's de democratic ideals, including the Lord's Court, where all citizens may speak freely and air their grievances without threat of reprisal. Doust ruled for five years and proved to be a capable ruler, beloved by the people. The regular presence of the Knights of Myth Draenor did much to ensure the protection of the area, particularly against incursions by Lyran Nathan... Nathaner the Pretender. Lyran was to have been Jordan's named replacement, but with the Zentarum routed, there was little validity to the claim. There are always some crappy weapons somewhere, or conveniently. Mm, I see, I see. <sighs> Alright, where's ten? There's ten. Elminster moves to Shadowdale. It is of note that during the time that Doust Solwood of the Knights of Myth Draenor assumed the role of Lord of Shadowdale, Elminster took up residence in the area. A semi-regular visitor up to that time, he took possession of a low, abandoned tower at the foot of the Old Skull and declared himself to be officially in retirement. The nature of that retirement varies from active involvement in local affairs to long-term vacations on other planes. The natives of the Dale have come to the understanding that they cannot always count on the powerful mage being in residence in times of need or danger, but when he is present in those circumstances, his aid is usually given. How convenient! Alright, onward to eleven. Doust chooses Morngrim Am Amcathra to succeed him. Doust Solwood, recommended to the position by Kelvin Blackstaff, ruled Shadowdale as Lord for five years. Seems like a millennium he was oft known to have reported, and the tedium of court life and the lure of adventure eventually caused him to retire his position and rejoin the Knights of Myth Draenor in regular adventuring. He handed the pendants of Ashaba, symbol of the Lordship, on to one of the younger knights, a Waterhaven noble, Water 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 noble named Morngrim Amcathra. Morngrim had been dispatched by Kelvin from Waterdeep for other purposes, but Doust liked both the young man's straightforward honesty and his willingness to shoulder the burden of protecting the small community from myriad dangers. Time has proven this choice a wise one. Okay. Alright, okay. And twelve. Cheryl and Morngrim meet and marry. You know, these, these titles are real spoilers for the activity. The implications of Kelvin Blackstaff Arinson choosing the last two lords of Shadowdale, Doust Solwood and Morngrim M. Cathra, were not lost on the Dale's powerful neighbor to the south, Cormier. An agent was sent, was sent northward to divine Morngrim's true intentions and to guarantee the Dale's continued good relationship with the throne of the Purple Dragon. The agent was a rogue named Cheryl Rowanmantle, sent by Vandergast, throw all paperwork on this matter, has been curiously incinerated in Suzale, so all is hearsay and tale. Cheryl discovered more than she intended and fell in love with the young Morngrim. The two married and became the lord and lady of Shadowdale. Cheryl's loyalty is now to her husband and to the land they co-rule. This was probably not the intention of the Cormirans. <laughs> Now that one I've read before and it still amuses me. All right, that was that one. The fun part here is that I am in fact going to run the stream long just so I can read the contents of all these bookcases and I don't have to start the stream with it next week. So it's time for some more hot reading action, folks. You delightful nerd. <laughs> Why, thank you, Madlib. Handwritten note. 
This brief note is written in wild, looping, haphazard script. The words seem to be ominous, nonsensical babblings. Short, medium, square makes big muscles. Lum. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna copy that one down. It seems important. Short medium square makes big muscles period long dash lum okay wait there's about to be a lot of reading oh well, Mad Lib, you're off the hook. <laughs> uh, but first, I'm going to go to the next bookcase. Let's make sure that Green's points are not being wasted, shall we? Nope, they're not going to be wasted. Let me get my timer. All right. This is going to be interesting because the batteries on my cell phone are very low, but I'm sure they've got enough to time down 10 minutes for me. <laughs> Christ. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Uh, reading this much while singing is not something that I've done since I played Disco Elysium, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Here we go. The time begins now, and I start with water. Fingers on standby. <laughs> well, first we have a manual. What is this? Judging by the arcane symbols printed on its cover, it is clear that this book is imbued with magical properties of one sort or another. Until you attempt to either read or identify it, however, its precise nature will remain unknown to you. Interesting. Why is it called a manual and not a magic book? Very weird. Very, very weird. I'll take the necklace too. Oh, I can't because I'm out of space. Never mind. History of Camel Shan. History of Cormier. History of Dambrath. History of Durpar and Var. Let's start with Callum Shan. While I blow my nose because singing is vibrating some things that shouldn't be vibrated apparently. Callum Shan is older than either of the other empires of the Sands. First settled over 7,000 years ago by the Jen, a humanoid race from the elemental plane of air. These Jen were known to be very magical, and during the course of their rule, they developed many new spells previously not available in the plane of air. The Jen prospered for over 1,000 years in Kalimshan, but their reign was ended by an invasion of creatures and minions from the Plain of Fire. Some say this is where the bitter hatred between Jedi and Ifriti started, though others contend that this was just a result of a hatred that was already there. Whatever the cause, the battle was long and bloody and took over 100 years to complete. The Jen finally routed the attackers, but were greatly weakened in the event. They slowly declined, and the last mention of the Jen is just under 6,000 years old. Getting Sound of Music vibes? <laughs> yeah, probably. The hills are alive with the sound of bloodshed. I didn't do that to the right tune, but oh well. For the next 4,000 years, Kalam Shan was dominated by nomadic tribes of humans. Tribes from various places, Chult, the Shar, the Shining Plains, Shondath, even Am and Cormier took turns dominating, only to be conquered by the next nearly identical tribe. 
This is very complicated for me because I can't actually detect what key the background music is in. <laughs> Slowly, the nomadic nature of Kalim Shan began to change. As explorers and traders from Amn, Waterdeep, and Cormir discovered the wonders of the area, some tribes began to settle down and develop new means of support, like fishing, farming, or trading. These communities began to band together for mutual protection, and soon a civilization will be, was born. It was only 1,300 years ago that the Shun Empire, now called Ilkazar, came into being. Any new viewers will be like, oh, this has happened before. Sing mode is very popular amongst my long-term viewers who have uh, built up enough points. The Shuns were a grand and glorious empire, and their excesses were the foundation of Kalashite snobbery today. They grew wise and powerful in the ways of magic, and ships and caravans bearing the Shun flag traveled across the realms. Shun himself, a particularly powerful mage, created a book of great power during this time called the Tome of the Unicorn. The exact location of the tome has been lost in time, but since the book is two feet by three feet and made of pure metal, it's likely to still be around somewhere. There are no point redeems but sing mode. Sing mode is all that matters. <laughs> 900 years ago, the Shun Empire abruptly vanished. A great magical upheaval was sus suspected at first, but learned mages of other lands dispute the claim. A force that great, they say, would have disturbed magical powers and beings throughout the realms, and that didn't happen. Sages who have studied the Shun at great length have reached no definite conclusions, but the most popular theories today center around a plague or disease that decimated the population. You're going to have to go to bed soon, oh no. Oh no. Today, the Shun impact on Kamil Shan is still great. The grandeur of that empire is responsible, more than anything else, for the strong national character of Kamil Shan today. The ruins of the Shun greatest city, Monrativi Teshi Mir, can be still be found in the wilderness to the west at the edge of the forest of Mir. See below for more on Monrativi Teshi Mir. Since the fall of Shun, no force or people has risen to solely dominate the land. There are half a dozen or so major cities, each of which exerts its power over its own area. Ahoy, the flaming bee! You've arrived just in time for sing mode. <laughs> Where was I? About 170 years ago, a man in Camelport amassed a large army and declared himself Pasha over the land. Before that army could march, however, the representatives of each major city met and agreed to recognize the Pasha's authority in limited areas and to pay a small tribute to him, enough to pay for the works the Pasha expected to do. The oldest son of each Pasha inherits the title. If there is no son, the mayors of each large city select a new one. The current Pasha, Rashid Jenishpul, has ruled for over 18 years and is the grandson of a Pasha elected by the mayors of Kamishan 44 years ago. Is his given name actually Wade? Has anyone checked? Has anyone checked at all? Next book. That was Kalimshan, now it's Cormier. Cormier dates its years from the founding of House Obarskir 1,342 years ago. How precise. The first of the noble houses and its line of kings. For the bulk of this time, Cormier was little more than a single city, Suzale, and a few fortified outposts. 
At times, the monarch was forced by rebellion and intrigue to rule from these outposts instead of from the throne. King Azun is the fourth of his name and the seventy-first of his line. The land has been officially at peace for many years since Reagard overthrew the last of the border raiders. However, Cormiran armies have taken part in many actions in nearby regions, recently mustering its forces to face Gondigal, the rebel of Arbel, to occupy Tilverton on the marches of the Dalelands, and to lead a crusade against the great Twigan horde invading from the east. One wit has noted that, yes, the land is at peace, but the army has to keep busy. In addition to pursuing major actions, Cormiran patrols often skirmish with bandits on the roads in the north and west, and are at present battling orcs and other creatures, north and east of Cormir and Tilver's Gap and Shadow Gap. Both of these areas are threatened by raiders who will menace Cormir itself if they ever overrun Tilverton. I love the extensive lore of these games, but the books gets extensively detailed to a painful degree at times. Oh no, I hadn't noticed! How did you notice? Cormir has built a fortress, Castle Crag, to defend the kingdom from attacks from that quarter, and maintains the High Horn to protect against attacks from the west. That was Cormir. Next is Dambrath. The nation of Dambrath was formed out of a barbarian kingdom almost a half millennium ago by powerful allegiance of priestesses of Loviatar and the drow from the city of Tlindet. I'm going to go with Tlindet. It's giving dry university lecture. <laughs> in 2011, sorry, in 2011 DR, fleeing from the destruction of their homeland by the then great kingdoms of Unther and Mulherand, four tribes of barbarians entered Dambrath. They found a coast where the dolphins danced and plains where the grass was long. They roamed from the borders to the walls of Halrua, as far east as the current borders of Estegan. They soon became known as the Archaean, or People of the Wind. Well, that's the end of the points. Now I, I, I'm not free because there's still more to read, but I'm certainly, uh, I'm, I'm free from having to sing it. <laughs> All right, so in 545 DR, a great war chief, Reinhar, arose to lead the tribes. The halflings of Liren were quickly enslaved and several of the coastal cities of Durpar were captured or razed. Estegan fell to his rule, and eventually Reinhar turned his attention to Halrua. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it, Flaming Bee. I'm assuming that that's what all that means. Why are you rotating skulls at me? Um, <laughs> An army of 40,000 horsemen and a fleet of 50 ships mounted a coordinated attack, and even though Reinhar was able to get beyond the walls of Halrua and occupy the cities of Mithel, Galdel, and Zalsu, their magics proved to be more than a match for the invaders. Reinhar was finally defeated in a great battle at Silzir by the archmage Mykentil and his troop of wizards. Oh, I remember reading this one. Mykentil sounds like the name of a mucus medicine. Or an anti-mucus medicine. All right, I'm a tip. <laughs> All right, have a good night, Madlib. I will be ending the stream once I finish reading all these books, but I don't know how long that's going to take me. So have a good night. Sleep well. Thank you for coming by. All right. Reinhard's son, Reinhard II, took command of the army and set out on a two-month overland retreat. He arrived home with a thousand surviving fighting men and no shaven. Reinhard II proved to be as good a ruler in defeat as his father was in war. He consolidated his forces and pulled home almost all of his troops, as he knew that the defeat made them tempting prey for raiders and encroaching monsters. This action allowed for the safe development of his peoples. By the time the ninth Reinhard was king in 802 DR, the Archaeans were fat and lazy. Reinhard the Ninth, or Reinhard the Foolish as he is most commonly known, insisted on expanding his nation to gain more gold to finance his military campaigns. He
He ordered the mining of many rich loads of silver and electrum in the Gnollwatch Mountains, but before his plans of expansion could begin, the miners encountered the drow of Tlindet. The drow were outraged and began a steady series of raids and attacks on the Archaean strongholds. Whole villages were destroyed overnight, and no trace of the invaders could be found. My hotel is as clean as an elven arse. <laughs> Reinhard IX committed the foolhardy action of attacking the drow in retaliation. While the Arcans managed to get a force into the drow city, this action only succeeded in uniting the normally chaotic drow. For once, the full power of a drow city was turned against an enemy. The battle quickly moved back to the surface. Reinhard's raiders were wiped out, leaving Reinhard with only a small portion of his original military. This was not enough for the drow, who demanded total enslavement of the entire surface nation. The Archaeans resisted valiantly, and the war went on for three decades at tremendous cost in life to both sides. Finally, the Drow had the Archaean forces cornered at Maldur. Almost without hope, the defenders were overjoyed when a group of half-elven pilgrims appeared on the scene. The high priestess, Kathleteer Shintar, offered the aid of her clerics to help defend the city, and Reinhard took this to be an omen from the gods. A priestess was placed with almost every company. Within a ten day, the drow struck. The priestesses did indeed prove to be of great aid, but to the drow. Every priestess turned on the Archaeans, and Kathir herself slew Reinhar. The drow were still weakened by the battle, and only the presence of the priestesses enabled them to win. Kathir, realizing the unique advantage she possessed, made a deal that even the suspicious drow embraced. Her priestesses would rule the land, and in exchange they would provide access to the surface for the drow, trading weapons, slaves, and supplies. The drow were delighted with this brazen offer from a surface dweller. Reinhard had been slain and the insult avenged, and after thirty years of war, the drow were not particularly interested in Dambrath. They did insist, however, on taking the best captured males as slaves. Kathir quickly agreed to this, seeing the males as an obstacle to her own power. Kathir ruled for 205 years. She fulfilled her promise to make Dambrath, or the Nation of Pain, a bastion of evil in the realms. In her time, Kathir saw the priesthood of Leviatar expand to thousands, and faith in the Beast Lords previously worshipped by the Archaeans was nearly eradicated. Many of the Archaeans were able to escape their new mistress and flee to the Swagdar. There they resumed their almost forgotten nomadic life. The priestesses of Loviatar continued to enjoy good relations with the drow, and some even took mates, creating a race of drow half-elves. These dark half-elves became known as the Krinti, or Noble Ones. Most are priestesses of Loviatar, though many are mages as well. They consolidated their power, learning much of the area from the Shabali, or Lower Ones, as the Archaeans are now called. The capital of Dambrath was established at, K at Kathir, built after Kathir's passing and named in her honor. Her death came at the hands of her daughter, Felina, who had grown tired of waiting for her mother to die. Felina ruled for only five years, however, before her own daughter, Kathake, assumed the throne in the same fashion. Kathake ruled for 54 years, eventually falling in battle against a gold dragon. She died childless, and her niece, Melanith, assumed the throne. Melanith faced an increasing population and unrest among males who longed for a return to their prestige of old. Melanith did not return to their previous status, but she did make use of them. Fearing that the great nations of Mulharand and Unther might rise again, she decided that men would handle mundane tasks, such as the defense of the kingdom. She was the first to name a male to the post of war chief. Saladar, a Krinti, became the queen's consort. Widespread bribery and corruption characterized his term as war chief. He was, however, responsible for getting many privileges returned to the Archaeans. After Melanith's rule, the Shabali were considered second-class citizens rather than slaves. Though males were granted more power during her rule, Melanith also solidified the split between the sexes. While the rules of Dambarth have always been females for over two centuries, it was more because of competence than gender. Melanith, however, decreed that men could have no authority except over other men. The female-led hierarchy of Leviatar was quick to back this move. Many of the bravest and best men in the kingdom perished in raids on Estegund, Durpar, the bandit tribes of Veldorn, and against the Knolls who had returned to the Knoll Watch Mountains. Some even fought at the side of the Drow in their battle with the Samaritan city of 
Aventine. The deep gnomes were destroyed, but so were the Shibali. The drow and the Krinti were dr largely unharmed, and for their aid, the Krinti were rewarded with a number of drow males to breed into their race. Melanith took a drow male as her consort to replace Saladar, who had perished in the conflict. The drow, Nim Inthig, fathered three daughters and a son. It was at this time that Melanith began the isolationist policy that Dambrath still follows today. Melanith ruled for 156 years, her daughter Ostilil for 125. The current queen of Jambreth is Unandra. She is known there as the Pirate Queen, for she has sailed as far south as Zakhara on pillaging raids. Unandra has been ruling for 71 years and is beginning to show signs of age. She has three daughters as well, named Lutheran, Meltruil, and Hasphir. When she does, while she does remain extremely popular, especially to the Krinti, the children of leaders in this land are not known to patiently wait their turn. <laughs> All right, so that was Dambrath. Dambrath? Dambrath? So just one more left. History of Durpar and Var. Durpar and Var, the golden ship. Oh, Durpar and Var the Golden share a common history. Over 3,000 years ago, these countries were both subject to the great kingdom of Raurin. When Raurin fell in negative 2,488 DR, the countries of Durpar and Var barely survived the destruction. Rioting, mass destruction, and hatred of nobility were rampant, and the two countries descended into barbarism for over two millennia. Finally, after most of the barbarian tribes were wiped out by the great empire of Mulharand, a leader emerged. Sama Satama, a mere trader, experienced divine revelation and formulated a new philosophy. All things in the world were connected, were part of a single creation spirit, and all of the gods of the realms were merely parts of the same entity. Soon, all the Shining Lands embraced the teachings of Satama, and the seeds of civilization were laid in what came to be known as the Lands of the One. Since the Lands of the One had many natural resources, trade with Mulharand and Luran became a way of life. Merchants were honored above all. In time, the Maharaja of Durpar and the Raja of Var were replaced with a council of merchants. During this time, the land suffered occasional raiding attacks from the horsewomen of Dambrath and had many skirmishes with the neighboring countries of Estegund and Ulgarth. In 1023 DR, after an armed peace is being worked out with Ulgarth, the, the Council of Merchants decided that something needed to be done about the raiders from Estegund who were hurting trade with other countries. War was an inconvenience, but interrupting trade was life threatening Jeradim, the richest merchant in the land, was given power to negotiate a settlement. During these negotiations, he proved, at least in the eyes of the Derparians, that he was indeed the master trader he seemed. Estegund had just tried a foolish invasion of Dambrath. The vengeful female leaders of that land wiped out nearly every able-bodied fighting man they sent. The monsters of Veldorn were causing problems, and Estegund was going through a famine. It was here that Jeradim showed his fine merchant's instincts. He could not pass up such an advantage and began bargaining the most outrageous trade of all time. He met with the leaders of Estegund, a fearful king and his nobles, and explained the advantages of Durparian life and the philosophy of the Adama, the oneness of all things. He bargained for days until finally the king made the trade. He purchased the whole of Estegund for the countries of Durpar and Var at the price of 24 gems. He also promised protection and help for their integration into the Derparian way of life. Thus were formed the Shining Lands. Within a hundred years, the three countries share a common way of life, and with the added strength and resources of Estegund, Derparian merchants increased their trading range. They roamed as far east as Karatur, as far north as the Sea of Fallen Stars, and west to Dambrath and Halrua. At the present time, with the newly discovered lands of Maztica and Zakara beckoning, the future looks bright. 24 gems! 24 gems for an entire country! Okay, I think... Yes, that is all the bookshelves in this room. So, I will be, I will be doing a little rearranging around here. I'm going to send this off to Minsk to hold. And I'm going to give this to Jahira to hold. 
and that will give me a literal couple of spaces. I will take that necklace. Well, they were hooked. I hope they were really large gems, but honestly, it just said 24 gems. It never said anything as to their size or even what kind of gems they were. Speak. Okay, so continuing on the path that I've been going on, this would be the next door. So let's yeah, gather everybody over here. Yes, looking good. All right. This is where I'm going to be calling it tonight. All of that reading took a very long amount of time, and I am well past my uh, scheduled stop time, so I will continue exploring the Watcher's Tower, of which there is quite a bit to explore, oh my goodness, uh, coming up next stream. So, let me save... This is going to end up like that wizard's tower, and I'm going to end up in here for a really, really long time. So, next week we will pick up where I left off on exploring the Watcher's Tower and trying to read all of the lore contained therein. <laughs> Good night to you too, Pelor Fox. It has been uh, very nice to have you here tonight, and for your subscription and your follow, not in that order. <laughs> And I mean, I would have skipped this place if you had not told me about it, so I thank you for that at this time. Maybe I won't thank you later, but I certainly thank you now. And for anyone who is curious about my previous adventures in Baldur's Gate 2 or uh, my playthrough of Baldur's Gate 1 on stream, you can find that on my YouTube channel, which I've just had my bot link to in the chat. There are playlists there for any game that I have played twice or more, so it is very easy to find all of the Baldur's Gate and to binge it if you so wish. There's an awful lot of it though, so I'm not sure if you want to binge it all in one go. But it is there, in all of its glory, and me speculating about plot as we go along. Also, good night to you too, Green. Thank you for showing up tonight. And I will be streaming again tomorrow night. Starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be playing Slime Rancher for Management Monday. I will be continuing to work on my lovely squeaking slime farm. Uh, that is not a category of slime, that is a description. <laughs> and uh, I think I will actually be starting the stream with a bit of rearrangement, because there's some things that I would like to move around for my best convenience. Uh, for instance, I would very much like to have a silo. But the best place for the silo, there's stuff growing there, so I need to move the stuff that's growing there to somewhere else. So uh, I will be working on that. It's probably going to be a rotation, uh, probably moving the cube fruit into the cave and moving the stuff that's growing where I want to put the silo into the place where the cube fruit is. And da -da -da. You do not need to know this. This is, this is tomorrow night's problem. This is future Foxwine's problem, not current Foxwine's problem. So uh, it will be gathering more slime plorts and exploring some more areas and hopefully finding some more uh, Gordo slimes out in the wild uh, upcoming this Monday. Then on Wednesday night at as close to 7 p.m. as we can get enough people together, I will be playing either Among Us or Scribble It or 100% Orange Juice with my friends. Among Us needs no explanation or description by this point. If you don't know what Among Us is, I would really like to know what rock you've been under, because I want to know where that is. Because I think I might want to hide under that rock myself for a while. Scribble It is the game that we play when we have too many people for 100% orange juice, but not enough for playing Among Us the way that we want to. It is a Pictionary-style game where one person draws and everybody else tries desperately to remember how to spell the thing that we're guessing that they're drawing. And 100% Orange Juice is Anime Mario Party. It is a whole bunch of anime girls and a handful of anime boys running around a board where you roll dice with various cards that change effects, and every single character has their own special ability that changes the way the game plays, the same way the cards do. Or in different ways than the cards do in some cases. So uh, those are the group games that are played on Wednesday. And then on Wednesdays, usually somewhere around 10.15 or 10.20 or so, when my friends have to go to bed because their day jobs require them to be up in the morning, ugh, I switch over to my solo Valheim server where I crash around and try to do my best. 
uh, upcoming in Valheim. Uh, the mountain that is closest to my main base is proving to be extremely fruitful indeed. I still have more silver to pull out of that mountain. Uh, there's the possibility that there will be a drake egg for me to figure out how to get home. And I also found a frost cave which I did not expect to find so close to my base. I'm not sure if I'm equipped to go in there. I'm not sure if my armor is strong enough, but I do, I would really like to poke my nose in there and see what's going on. So there's many things that I could get up to in Valheim and all of them are going to be advancing me further through the game. <laughs> and then on Thursday night, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time, I shall be playing Disciples Liberation for Try Not to Die Thursday. Uh, Disciples Liberation is a turn-based combat game. Uh, you work your way through, making yourself and your troops stronger. Uh, you, There's a plot. I don't remember what the plot is. I haven't actually played very much of the game. I have... I've played the demo, but I have not played the game. But I, I know that I'm going that I like it, and uh, we'll all discover the plot together, and hopefully I won't die too much so I won't have to put my counter up very far. And then, next Sunday night, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be playing Baldur's Gate 2 again and continuing my way through Watcher's Keep and whatever I find in here. And uh, hopefully I find some interesting things and maybe I'll even find an ammo pouch. Uh, Pellor Fox there seems very convinced that there is an ammo pouch in here somewhere, so I, I have my hopes up. So we'll, we'll all see if I manage to find one or if I just find, you know, three more hours worth of reading of lore. You never know. So that is the upcoming week in my schedule, all the games that I'm going to be playing and everything that I'm going to be doing in those games. And I really hope that that 60 second ad break is over by now because I have no time sense whatsoever. But yes, tonight has been very fun and I hope that all of you have had at least as much fun as I have. And I hope you all have a great night. Good night!